You are listening to the Savage Fincast, episode 108. Malcolm, there's no you in team. Chicago. A criminal mastermind called Overlord held our city in his terrifying grip. Ordinary cops were losing the battle against Overlord's super freaks and mutants. Then, a miracle happened. When I found him, he had no memory of his past. I helped him find an identity and a life. Now we have a fighting chance. Now we have the dragon. This is the Savage Fincast, the show that spent $90 on action figures today and is feeling kind of messed up about it. My name is Jim Purcell. <laughs> I'm Craig Olson. I'm Raven Perez. And we are here... $90. One- oh, yeah. It's- Sorry. <laughs> We're here once again with another episode of the Savage Fincast, the Internet's only podcast dedicated to the uh, to the genius of Eric Larson and his creation, Savage Dragon. Uh, yes, yes, Craig. I did in fact spend ninety dollars on action figures. NECA came out with like a uh, twenty fifteen Doc Brown uh, from Back Great to the Future, Scott! indeed. And uh, there was also a um, uh, McCree figure from the Thing. That I'm not a big the Thing fan. What? John Carpenter's the Thing. Um, How can you not be? I mean, I watched it when I was an adult because I didn't like spooky movies when I was a kid. Spooky. Uh, uh, and then there was also this other like uh, King Kong uh, figure that had like a biplane, and uh, it, it's like a, it's like the nineteen forties King Kong. It, it, it's cool. Uh, you can see pictures. That is of it. A, a random ass group of fig- figures. Yeah. Well, the reason do. it's random is because they're they're Target exclusives that came out ahead of Father's Day. I don't. They'll uh-huh. probably get wide release later, but I don't know. They're in front of me, and I couldn't say no because I got a problem. That's how they get you. Yeah. That's how they get you, dude. Did you say because I have a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's starting to become a problem. I just okay. saw at Target the other day. Maybe you, Jim, know about these. They're like Marvel figures, but they kind of look like Secret War, War style figures. Like oh, they Migos. Don't really... They're like Migos. Kind of. Or yeah, are you talking I... about the little tiny six inch ones? This, I think they're the six inch ones. The three they're they're kind of like Star Wars right? figures where the elbows don't bend, but they look cool. They look uh, like 80s figures. With like the, with like the fabric clothing. No, you mean Kenner, no. Kenner style, like oh. like Secret Wars style. I don't know Secret Wars figures very well. They're like, kind of like Star Wars guys, but they're like their aren't their knees and elbows don't bend. It's four just inch. Four, they're like they're like four. I'm inch an idiot. I don't know like toy lingo, so you have to bear with me here. But okay, so the arms, maybe there's there's, there's like no posability to them. No, they just basically have four points of articulation. Oh, like just the show, but. They're like the figures I used to play. I don't know. I find those kind of figures are more detailed. I don't know. I just like them. They look old school to me. And yeah, they, I, I like have Marvel has a whole line. I haven't seen any of those recently, but I haven't been looking at them very hard uh, because they don't appeal to me. Uh, Greg, let's say you cave and you have to get one. One. You have to get one. Which one you get? I don't know which ones they have. I only saw the Iron Man one, and I forget what was on the back. But I was like, oh, this is neat. They look like 80s figures. Well, there are. A they lot look of like the. Do you do you know? Sorry, go ahead. There are a lot of retro throwback figures right now. Like there's a whole line of He-Man uh, figures. Yeah, I've that seen are, those. They they have both like the the original style where their arms and legs just move like the Secret Wars figures, but they've also got retro action ones that have more articulation but have the same style as the uh, yeah. as the original ones. He-Man I don't care about He-Man, so I haven't bought them. He-Man, He-Man. Don't care about He-Man. Not a He-Man at He-Man. all. I, I miss the train on He-Man and Thundercats. They did just there. I've got no nostalgia for them. Even sexy, oh. sexy Chitara. I mean, not really. <laughs> I gotta share this with everybody, listeners included. But Craig's I think my mom me. found my huge collection of muscle characters. <gasps> nice, dude. Did and she? You said she, I, they're she, moving, so they found them in the attic. They're moving. Yep. Why and so she said she found them. She swears it's them. 
I should have had her send a picture or something. But Craig, I think I'm going to go up there and try to. You got to get them I'm, and you got to take. She pictures. said the wrestling ring is with it. Which oh, I'm hoping. Yes, dude. Pictures. I expect pictures, dude. Yeah, I should have asked her. That is I'm fucking. I'm going to go up anyway because I got to get all my old comics. Dude. So listen to this. I was in my comic store, and this guy was like, oh, I was at some yard sale or something, and he had the first appearance of Deadpool. In my comic shop, he wanted to sell it for like $400, and they didn't blink an eye because today I walked in, and they had it for, up for sale for $600. And I'm like, how is that real? Well, Deadpool's very popular. Is, is it Deadpool's that much? Hot? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Deadpool's a money, money guy now. Dude, yeah. that issue is sitting in my mom's attic. It's probably all fucked up. I gotta go. I gotta go and get all my old comics from the '90s out of my mom's attic. Yeah, dude, absolutely. If you have a Deadpool, I, have, I should just sell it. I don't care about it. I don't. Yeah, it's been sitting in my mom's attic. I was just amazed. Use it to buy more muscle. But, but the thing that drives me crazy is, you know how many issues of of that were sold? Like how it's not how can it be rare? I think it's because no one gave a fuck and they got destroyed. Yeah, like, a, that's how rare things happen. That's probably a, how mine is. Mine's probably creased to it's fuck. It's just a random issue of New Mutants, right? Or was it X-Force at that point? It was New X-Force. I think it was, nine, was it X-Force? I, I think, think it was X-Force. It was the one with, like, Gideon on the cover. Maybe it was. Yeah, I think that's X-Force. Because yeah. I remember I had that shit. And I was like, yeah. cool. He said Gideon. Gideon's the lamest looking shit in the world. Yeah, he's got the 90s, like, ponytail, like, head. That, I don't know, kabuki ponytail thing or whatever you call it it looks like yeah, professor x with a ponytail wearing like a bathrobe <laughs> it's terrible everybody had that hairstyle in the 90s oh so this cover ones. yeah mm-hmm. yeah yep. this is oh it's new mutants i was right it is right it's yeah. it's uh it's like it's, it's right before yeah, it's, it's like 90, 98 or 98 something, right? so i think it turns into x wars after issue 100 yeah. so what, yep. why, what so why are we here again yeah, you know, this uh, I was excited because my parents are moving. <laughs> but why are we really here? I don't know. I think it's time to do with a podcast about Savage Dragon. So, world's only Savage Dragon podcast, bros. Only. Sometimes Deadpool. Sometimes McCree. Sometimes King Kong with the Savage biplane. Savage Deadpool. <laughs> uh, so, we got some news. Yeah, we got some news. Let's jump right into it. Top of the we'll hour. Talk about other random bullshit for another hour. Top top of the hour. Seems like there's a lot of ant news that shoot through. I'm going to cover it all. Concise. It's about freaking time. Yes, dude. If for those who have been very patient, oh, ho, ho, I see what you did there. Ant is here, and uh, we got the cover reveal for number two. We got the cover reveals for number one. And uh, Ant number one is going to launch in August. Ant number 12 should be out by the time that you guys are listening to this. So here's how it breaks down. Uh, Ant number one is going to have four covers, variants. Uh, It's going to have those exact same covers with the retro Image Comics group trade uh, trade dress, just like Savage Dragon's been doing. So we got, you know, uh, Ant sort of like uh, coming at you, big premiere issue. We got Ant running up the side of a building, like big hand coming at you. That's the coolest cover. Ant doing the camper's urination pose. (laughs) (laughs) Camper's urination pose. Yep, you know, but you instantly know what I mean, right? She's in the void. Yep, squatting. And then you've got Ant. Scooping a quick deuce. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's it. And then you got Ant in front of green buildings. And so uh, we do as we must. Oh, wait, hold on. And then so real quick to paint you a word picture, listener. Ant number two's cover is uh, showcasing on the cover kind of how the interiors are going to look. Where Ant is rendered and everyone else is flat covered. She appears to be punching out terrorists in a war-torn country. I am honestly a little concerned about this cover. So, lay it on me, dude. What's up? It seems a little, um, 20 years out of date. What do you mean? I don't don't know. It just seems kind of like Ant Punch's Middle Eastern terrorists seems a little odd. A little dated. We don't don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. 
Yeah, I, where know, she I is. mean, we don't know for sure. Absolutely, it could mean anything, but it seems. I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I mean, there's well, still troops over there, so I don't know. Yeah. Allow me to put your mind at ease. We also saw an interior spread of ant. If you were ant, might be too topical. Well, no, we it's saw. Not, I'm not saying that. It's like I'm not against you know politics in my comics. I, of course, read Savage Dragon. It's more a question of like why. Why is well, she I'm doing sure, this? I'm sure it'll have a good. Re- you can't judge a book by its cover. That's one of the oldest things in the world. Don't don't worry about it. it it'll be okay. Um, we got also to see a double page spread of the interiors of Ant, and she's beating up what very clearly are Batman uh, pastiches, homages, pastiches, homages. Uh, we got. From left to right, if you find that uh, double page spread, Pussy Whip, Randy Dandy, Quizmaster, Yuck It Up, and Half Black. So, I'm pretty sure taking it back to I'm what I'm pretty it, sure there's actually a Quizmaster in DC. That's a weird, uh, weird choice for a name. Because I think he's supposed to, I think he's supposed to be Riddler. Right? Yeah, definitely a Riddler parallel. But I'm well, saying, I mean, it's, I'm saying there's a Quizmaster as well, dude. But the problem with DC and Marvel is if I said. There's a guy, uh, you know, Captain Dick Fart. I guarantee that in 1963, <laughs> somebody made up Captain Dick Fart, and they've just had the copyright for years. Fair enough. Like, it's there's nothing you can do about it, is all I'm saying. Um, rate the covers, guys. I'm just saying, I want you on these ant number ones, where there's like four of them. Yeah. And so, Jim, who refuses to buy variants... I reject must them. You must make a choice. Which one of these covers are you getting, and why? Well, if I had a choice, I would probably get the running up a building one. You, you, you can have a choice. I give you that choice. So, yeah. Craig, what about you? Yeah, the running up the building ones, cool as hell. The other ones, I'm not that. I could give or take. Yeah, they're pretty pin uppy, dull, boring. I will be getting, in reality, all four of the non retro trade dress covers so i'm getting all four but running up the building definitely the strongest one i kind of like the retro because of the little like image of the character in the circle i like that part of it yeah Uh, it actually is really cool (laughs) i love i love the his ant logo it's weird it's weird because massive is it me or is the image i also kind of retro on the non on the sorry on the non-retro regular issue it seems like that's like the old school like way of doing the image logo maybe it's what the do they do ma- different do they not have the word image inside of it anymore no no it's not even that I, th- I don't know there's something about it maybe it's the color maybe it's the color yellow I thought image that logo was always the same except for that brief period when Valentino took over the book when it was like it, they also had the, the t- uh, 30th anniversary or the 25th anniversary? I forget what anniversary just passed. Anyway. We're coming up on 30. I think next year's 30. Like, there was a... there was a, I think on the 25th anniversary, there was a logo, a different logo for the entire year. You mean, like, the short one, right? Where it's, like, mostly the dot and very little, like, I? That's no. the Valentino one. No. That's okay. A, that's a different one. Oh, okay. I don't know which one you mean, then. I will look it up and show it to you later. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think they're all solid. I think Ant 2's cover is cool. I think it looks good. I'm with you guys. I think sort of the, of the four Ant, like, number one covers, I think, like, the other three are almost too pin They're too uh, similar to me. To me, like Very, yeah. very similar. And I'm going to say something, and I don't care whose nipples it twists. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to have Ant, you got to have an ass in there. And yeah, there's no lot- ass. There's... The ass got smaller too, I think. Lots of crotch, no ass. Really? Where though? Show me the ass, Jim. Uh, which one? Of the, which one of these has the ass, dude? Um, all, all. Well, the first one where they're jumping, get the little side ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, most of these are in the yeah. These most of these are in the front, but side ass is all we really get. But you can tell she's, well, we, you can tell she's got hips. We call that a hip uh, in the <laughs> medical world. Side ass. 
I'm not saying I'm not saying like the ass has been reduced. I'm saying uh, I miss like not miss. I'm saying the ass got reduced. Do you think it's got reduced? I think we're just seeing her from the front. Well, I'm saying, like, if you're going to do Ant, right, and you've got four covers to burn, and we are all of the opinion that you know, those pinup covers are maybe a little too similar, why not give old school Ant fans an egregious ass cover to, okay. to, reel, to reel them in? And maybe, you know yeah, what I mean, maybe, the Mario goalie ass cleavage style. Maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think these are intended to be cheesecake covers. They're not intended to be, but and it's still a nude figure, basically. Well, at any rate, if it was me, Did I'd put an egregious ant cover, an uh, ass cover, in one of these four. We um we talked about the double page splash that Eric put on his Facebook page uh, for people looking for it. He posted on May fourteenth, but we didn't talk about the other. He had a single splash page on there, which I think was almost better than most of the covers. Which is the ant like jumping down a building, and you see all like the fire escapes, which I thought looked cool as shit, like yeah. all in the shadows. Yeah. Do you mean the green where she's uh, like green rim lighting? Yes. No. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 I agree with you, Craig. I think that actually would have made a better cover than some of the number one. Like, okay, get the camper's pissing pose out. Just get rid of that one, <laughs> and put this one in. That's a good cover, dude. As good as shit with the dark building. Yes. The contract. Okay. I love it. It needs said, Eric is coloring this. Yeah. And I like it. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to like the whole flats thing. But between, like, the one that you were talking about where the fire escapes are in silhouette. And then the one where he's beating up all the Batman. Like, uh, she's beating up all the Batman villains. I think these colors are cool as fuck, actually. I think he put a shitload of time, too, into, like, thinking about how to, like, ink and color ant, the ant figure. I mean, remember he was playing around with it and, and featuring her in Spawn and, and, and yeah. Savage Dragon all the time, all the while. And, he, you know, I think he let out that some of those, the, the ant creatures from uh, Savage Dragon that looked very much like ant. Like the same red colors was kind of him just messing around to see how they would look printed and stuff like that. So when he did the ant, he kind of could nail down the look. I mean, I, are they really flatted? Because I'm, again, I'm looking at the uh, the ant versus the Batman villain thing, and there's shading. Yeah, there's more shading than what I thought. Um, you look at the cover to issue two; that is more what I was expecting. Yeah. Where, like, everyone else has literally no shading and, like, Ant is the only one with any rendering. Right. And then you go, like you said, Jim, you go to this, like, double-page spread where the pastiches are getting punched in the puss. And, uh, yeah, there's a shading abound. Shading everywhere. So, but Ant just seems know. to pop more. Like, the coloring. I don't know if it's just because the red. But, I don't know. Even if they're shading in the background, it, to me it feels like the background's a little more faded in color. But maybe it's just how deep, rich the red is on Ant. You're probably right. Um, sorry, that was a hell of a news item, but there's a lot of Ant to chew through. Uh, hey, listen, y'all, that's And ant. we've been waiting uh, a long time to talk about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, next news item, my friends. Yep, we got Savage Dragon 263 cover reveal. Um, if my memory is correct, it's the one with uh, Malcolm being crushed by Faco. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of an interesting cover in the sense that um, uh, what did it remind me of? It reminded me of another Savage Dragon cover, but it turned out it wasn't similar at all. <laughs> Funny story. I can't remember any of the specifics. Uh, but it's got a very Aliens vibe, I guess, with like the alien like approaching Ripley. Yeah. Like, the little mouth yeah, shooting absolutely. out. I tried to edit it to have a little tiny Mako mouth coming out of Fago's mouth, but I, it didn't work, so I never posted it. Oh, you should have, dude. That's funny. Yeah. You could just flip the comic and have like Malcolm looking like he's standing up, and it would look just like Alien. <laughs> exactly. Jim, do it anyway. It didn't look good. I, I messed with it for a while. It when just... it comes to the memes, bad editing looks better. Really? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> uh, 
I believe Craig has a news item for us. Yeah, well. Firepower number 12 uh, is out on stand, and for f- that's uh, Robert Kirkman and Chris Samney's uh, title. Mm-hmm. And I guess they're treating it like, you know, one year anniversary. It's double sized. And as part of the celebration, I think there's something like 13 variant covers by all different cool artists. And Eric is one of them. He's got a really cool cover of uh, the lead character with this kind of Kirby crackle around his fists um but i like the book i have not read the issue yet i just got it today actually um the cover looks neat i think you know other notable cover artists are frank miller frank quietly um todd mcfarlane rob Liefeld, uh, a bunch of guys but uh some cool covers to choose from man this was a crazy issue firepower dies in it yeah, fuck you. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I don't even know if his name is Firepower. I have no idea. <laughs> yes, you do. Stop lying. Is his name Firepower? His name you guys, you'll is you'll have to read Theodore. it to find out. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. You're right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um... I'll have to say that I saw an incredibly sexy fellow's meme on this one where he had edited in a word balloon next to uh, the guy's head and he was like saying, your tits look heavy. Let me give you a hand. It's very funny. I thought, man, whoever made that meme must be very handsome. Smell good. Be well endowed. (laughs) I would hope so. That was a good meme. Just a good meme, dude. You're a good meme. It's a great self promoter <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. Who is that man? Uh, handsome leader of men. Oof. Um, well, I guess that's it for the news, uh, my fair fellows, unless you want to say anything else about uh, firepower. Well, it's interesting that Eric's doing so many uh, um, variant covers right now because it's not only is the firepower issue out this week, but he did one for crossover, one for Geiger. Yeah, uh, over the last month, so it's interesting how many he's doing. It's cool. Recently. And, he had, and he had another interior uh, page sell for like forty eight thousand dollars. We didn't make it a news item because it's actually kind of happening pretty regular. Yeah. So I feel like Eric's work is just like in demand, which is awesome. Of course, he didn't make a dime because it's a you know third party sale. Well, sure. But it was notable that its value, I suppose. I just, That's insane. It's, well, it's just cool to see people like you know getting exposed to Eric's work is all. That crossover cover right. was great, and apparently it yeah. did reference something in the issue. By the way, oh, for those cool. wondering, go ahead and spoil it for me. I don't care. I haven't actually read the issue yet. Oh, it's kind of it's on the slab to be read. I have not gotten to it yet. Ew. Um, Craig, are you still reading crossover? Or did you bail? Uh, I get it. I haven't been reading it. I kind of fell off. I, I mm. might dive into reading it. If not, I will just be sitting in my long box unread. You but lost them, sadly, Donnie. I still no, well. Well, I mean, I suppose I'm not. Ru- I suppose I'm not rushing out to read it on the release day, which is not a good sign. But I don't dislike it. Mm. I think it's pretty good. I just. Uh, is it is it a limited series or is it? No, ongoing? it's ongoing. Yeah, it's it, it's trying to do some stuff like uh, I believe the arc the issue six was the end of the arc, and issue seven is going to be like a guest writer issue. Hmm. Uh, what was his name? Chip Chipsky Chipsinski Chip Zdarsky. Yeah, Chip Zdarsky. He is doing issue seven. Uh, hmm. What has he done? Um, Spider Man Life he, Story. Uh, he's doing um. He's got some comic at Image I'm reading, but I forgot the name. Stillwater. He's doing Stillwater at Image. Uh, A few other things. He writes a lot of Marvel books, or at least he did. I don't know what he's doing right now. That one issue had, uh, what was that Donny Cates comic with, like, the little robo-tattoo guys? Robo-tattoo guys. Not ringing a bell. drawn by a tattoo artist. It was an Image comic. Oh, Cyberzer, a tomahawk. Yeah, the wait, tom- yeah. wait, he, he and, did a tomahawk. Yeah, yeah, best thing he ever did. Uh, although, did you did you see the variant cover with him on it? 
No. <laughs> the Atomic Hawk variant cover for crossover is awesome. That's because here's the thing that's important to notice know about a tomahawk is that a tomahawk was like the tattoo artist's character. Like that was his savage dragon, right? And then him and Kate's teamed up to do that a tomahawk one shot. And so like dear listener, if you can get your hands on fucking a tomahawk, do it. <laughs> that fucking book's killer. At any rate, I guess the Tomahawk was in crossover. That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Cage's other... I think we already did this bit, but uh, yeah, is a God Country. Um, it has references to his other works. He's got a pretty deep bench to pull from. Yeah, he's got a bunch of like creator-owned stuff. For the listeners at home, Jim just shared his 263... Alien variant, and it is glorious. <laughs> it is glorious. Uh, I could do better. That was a rush job, Jim. Now, now you got to post it on the, on the Eric Larson board. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll have to. For memes, I'm telling you, you don't have to worry about it, dude. That's hilarious. So, shuffling right along at our leisurely pace, as we do. Um, we're getting into those interesting conversations. Listen, I'm feeling a little neglected here, okay? We gave you guys a really good interesting conversation. Only two people sent us replies. You're lucky, listener, because they're really good replies, but I'm very disappointed. <laughs> we're going to shame them. I am, dude. You lieabouts. What were you doing? You're probably still mostly in lockdown. Were you vaccinated? Why are you so sad? You better write in. After we read these, we're going to give you a new one. And if you don't write in, show's canceled. We're, we're done. I do not All right, so condone this okay. threat. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Listen, the last topic was, if you were given the reins to make a Savage Dragon show or movie, how would you approach it? What would you do? What would be your take? So, jumping right in. Dudes, how goes... Great question on the latest FinCast. Here's my response. We'd all agree a dragon show in any medium has the potential to be awesome. Jim and Raven, your ideas were great. A Japanime art style would definitely add some flair to the visuals and make the action look stellar. An Animatrix vignette style is a great vehicle to showcase the diverse characters and plots in the dragon universe. Craig, I think... I think your idea was pretty much Jim, so I'm leaving it out. (laughs) (laughs) It goes, for my money, I'm going live action, baby. The Rock stars as a dragon, starting off with a burning fireball lighting up the night sky above a vacant industrial backlot in a seedy early 90s Chicago. Nude green man emerges, cops appear, and the show begins. Frank Darling is Denzel Washington, or someone that looks apart if money is an issue. But remember, I'm we said pretty sure Denzel will do issue. anything for like a ham sandwich. <laughs> Are you in good hands? <laughs> um, I'll have Eva Longoria with short hair as Alex. Maybe Kurt Russell as Super Patriot. That is a great. I think we've pick. talked about Kurt Russell as Super Patriot before. I think that was back when we were doing the. Young Blood Strike Files retro. I think it we was talked a about long that. time ago. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. Um, the show takes place in the early '90s, pre-internet, post-communist world, with super freaks and mutants starting to gain the upper hand on law enforcement after the old guard of heroes dies off or becomes inactive. Show will maybe have a bit of kick-ass vibes, but with the costumes not being a direct translation of Eric's art, think less the tick and more Singer's X-Men. If I'm doing a trailer for the show, you're getting a 15 to 20 second quick fire montage featuring the Rock Dwayne Jackson who have ca- Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> Dwayne, Johnson. Rock the Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> rock, the, rock the Dwayne Johnson. Jackson. Who, <laughs> who I've casted because, God damn it, the dude knows drag- has Dragon's mannerisms, especially his facial expressions already built in. Not to mention an imposing build. After Dragon emerges from the fireball, maybe a Frank voiceover talking about his wife. uh, Talking to his wife. Damn, I'm fucking this one up left and right. 
Uh, no one knows where he came from. He doesn't even know who he is. We need his help. Cut to Cutthroat's blade, shattering on Dragon's arm. Inferno lighting up Dragon's hospital gown. Maybe some banner between Frank and Dragon. Alex makes an appearance, asking for backup. Dragon dropping through a suburban home's roof, proceeding to bust some criminal heads. Then Super Patriot making his infamous mall appearance in full click-clack mode. And here's the kicker. All these montages are being watched by a figure with an exposed brain matter on an incredible number of screens at an off-earth site at the end of the short trailer. You guys know who I'm alluding to. Cut to the title, Savage Dragon, or whatever streaming on whatever streaming service you prefer. Uh, there'd be a bit more dialogue, but I'm just trying to paint a picture of the live-action translation I'd be going for. show would be reminiscent of older action movies, but with digital effects you couldn't see in that era. Super Patriots, Mecha Arms being a showcase, along with Dragon's incredible strength and durability, strong sexual themes, nudity, coarse language, blood, but not blood just for the sake of blood or gore, just determined by situations, and a hard R rating for people of my generation. Hopes this email makes some sense as I'm rambling just a bit, as usual. Great show, guys. Keep up the great work. Tony M. So you've clearly thought through this through. I gotta say, what do you guys think? That's a good-ass response. You know, that was a lot of thought put into it. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think about this? uh, What I'm interested in most about his approach is the idea to early comic movie the costume design. Like, what do you guys think of that? Uh, I don't like it because I hate this the the night the two thousand X Men costumes a lot a lot. Uh huh. I, I think they were a reaction to a problem that didn't exist. Well, sure, but you there's undeniable that like it helped ease the world into these. I disagree. Things. I think it was a some suit decided that yellow was like kryptonite for some reason without any evidence to support that <laughs> basically they were chasing batman's dick yes i i can see how they'd be afraid because sometimes trying to translate costumes to real life they can come off goofy as shit i mean toby mcguire spider-man came out basically a year later and proved that you can just do it for real and no not knows. really though look at how they handled green goblin he was like a goddamn robot and he was the worst part of that movie it's a power ranger mm-hmm and then they got him even almost as bad with that hobgoblin, whatever. My yeah. point is, we're living in an era where you can totally take whatever outlandish shit Kirby was drawing and put it on the big screen, and people will eat it up. There's no reason to avoid it. Is it isn't it amazing at this day and age? Now we haven't seen a Wolverine costume yet. It is actually strange yeah. now that you say it's that. It's very loud. weird. It's very. It'll weird. be interesting how they handle that when they have to handle it. It's Yellow and blue. That they haven't tried tried it. Yellow and blue or black and brown? Black and brown Which, would probably look better on film just because yellow is kind of bright. You, you, even, you just, what did you just say? I just mean, I just mean if you. <laughs> yellow looks weird. Like yellow looks a full weird. yellow costume. Yeah, in reality, it doesn't look great. Uh, like again, Warren, Beatty's, Warren Beatty's Dick Trissy disagrees. Does he? Yeah, but it's supposed to yeah. look really comic booky. I know. <laughs> I mean, there definitely should be yellow incorporated somewhere. I'm yellow. just saying. I think, I'm just saying you could do the brown and blue costume, um, like straight up, and it would be fine. I think Tony's vision, though, I think was really solid and would compel. I feel like if you had bright colors, uh paired with that gore and stuff i think that live action wise people would maybe struggle a little more whereas if you had it like everything in the world was kind of like grim and gritty and i'm just saying like it's funny to me because it is kind of hard for me to imagine like a brian singer version of like super patriot right what's he gonna look like soldier man I feel well, like Super right. Patriot's got to look like Super Patriot. If it looks like anything other than that, it's not Super Patriot to me. But he's got that yellow shirt, right? Yeah, I guess that could change. Yeah, but you could make that, like, bronze. Like, I guess I guess he has to have the mask and, like, the metal arms. Yeah, I'm sure. Fine. Sure. And of course, the cod. you got to have the cod piece. That's important. <laughs> 
Sutton tells me that would probably be one of the first things. To yeah, get. shoulder pads and cod piece would probably get streamlined. Well, at any rate, that was beautiful, Tony. I mean, that was exactly the kind of thing we were looking for. So, thank you very much. And uh, I'll hand it over to you, Jim. Got another letter here. It says, hello, all longtime listeners, second time writer. As for the topic, if I was given reins of the Savage Dragon property, I would turn it into a 2D fighting game like Dragon Ball Fighters or Guilty Gear. There are so many awesome and crazy characters that can go up against each other like Rita Meter Maid vs. Glow Blow. Uh, if not that, <laughs> then an old classic side-scroller beat em up like Streets of Rage or TMNT. As for the animation side, I would like to see Savage Dragon as a classic four-part Japanese OVA that would end with uh, Dragon taking down Overlord. And just wondering if you guys have seen the Frank Chow auction that he holds on Sundays. In there, he sold the Savage Dragon original 250 cover that was rejected. Uh, here is what he wrote. Savage Dragon 250 rejected cover. Boy, this was a pain in the ass to draw. Never had I received so many criticisms over a male figure before. When you reach a certain level of popularity, you become a giant target for frustrated amateur artists and fans alike. Case in point, see this week's J. Scott Campbell's brush with an irate amateur artist who decided to quote-unquote fix Campbell's drawings. The criticisms I've received from my original Savage Dragon drawing were he's too muscular, too violent, not black enough, and he's making white power ha- he's making a white power hand signal. I shit you not. The comments and emails I get on the regular basis are hilarious and surreal. Anyway, I decided to abandon the Savage Dragon drawing and completely redrew it, echoing one of Savage Dragon's earlier covers, an homage, if you will. Uh, and the writer returns, keep up the awesome work, guys. Andres R. So, everyone thinks that Savage Dragon needs to be a fighting game or a beat-em-up. And I personally disagree fundamentally with that. But I don't know if I want to get into that right now. Give us the soundbite version. Keep it to an elevator pitch. I think Savage Dragon would work a lot better as like a two two D uh, like platformer. Honestly, I think you can do a lot more with like level designs. Uh, have more than one like playable playable character. You can basically use your powers as like. There's just I just think two D platformer gives more options than 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up. I find beat-em-ups to be horrendously repetitive, especially outside the arcades where quarter-munching was the name of the game. Fighting game, I love fighting games. I would play a Savage Dragon fighting game every day, but I always find that to be the easy answer when it comes to superhero games. And I want something more uh, experimental than just make Marvel vs. Capcom 2 with the characters I like. (laughs) <laughs> which, which is what it always seems to boil down to. Fair enough. I will, for the sake of brevity, not give my opinion. And we've done it in the past, but uh, what do you think then about uh, Andre's uh, sort of Japanese... Uh, it's, it's very specific, and I like this. The four-part Japanese OVA, original video animation for those who may be sort of like you know that was they weren't part of that generation don't know the lingo yeah well that's just the thing is is that's such a time capsule it sure we're is. talking about a, a level of quality of animation that is like significantly higher than a tv show yeah ovas were direct in yeah, ovas were direct to well originally they were direct to vhs and eventually direct to dvd um right. and yes they generally would have higher production they wouldn't they wouldn't quite be movie quality, but they also would right. be superior to television quality. Right. Uh, generally speaking, like just a real quick primer on this, the reason why they had better production values was because VHS companies were pumping a ton of money into them. Right. As a incentive for uh, for rentals, uh, rental stores, so that people would rent these movies to use on their new VHS players. Plus so two. Some, I mean, what are some examples of some of the more famous ones? Uh, Macross that Plus. Would know. Macross, okay. Macross Plus, which did get a lot of play um, in North America in the early '90s. Um, there was also, uh... wow, you put me on the spot here. I mean, there's tons of them, but it's hard for me to remember all of them. Well, um, if I'm not wrong, wasn't the Streamline Fist of the North Star wasn't actually a movie? It was like a dub that they just stitched together and sold as a. I mean, uh, it was. I honestly it, don't know. I'm pretty sure Fist of the North Star, the movie, is a movie. 
Okay, okay. I'm pretty sure that's not an OVA, but there was a TV show that had, that basically tells the same story. But I think they are different. They are not compilations of each other. But you hit the quality mark perfect. You said it's not quite a motion picture, but it's definitely way above what you would see in like TV. Because they had the budget and they just jammed it into four episodes instead of like fucking 27. And so, uh, yeah, man, when he says that... Craig, if you want a picture, imagine if the entirety of Savage Dragon, the cartoon show, was only four issue uh, episodes, but it was all as good as the intro. Right. Like that's what that's what we're talking about. And also, they they the other nice thing about it was because it wasn't a TV show, episodes could be a varying length. They didn't always yep. have to be thirty minutes. They could actually be hour long. In fact, just to bring this up real quick. The Invincible TV, uh, the Invincible uh, series on Amazon, although it is an ongoing TV series, the fact that it is eight episodes long, but they are forty or fifty minute episodes, yeah, makes it more like a Japanese OVA in many respects uh, than like your typical television show. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, that's a good way to uh, sort of. Yeah, yeah, good way to great way to paint it. Let me ask uh, you, Craig. Uh, you know, because I know Jim has strong opinions on this uh, J. Scott Campbell fix. Oh boy! You know we talked we talked a lot about <laughs> we talked a lot about Frank's cover and whatever else. You know, uh, listen. I mean, we don't have to go into this too awful much, but Andre brought it up. I feel compelled to talk about it just a little bit. Um, Let it out, Raven. What, yeah. What do you, what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about this whole? Because I'm going to just say it. I think that only. Eric had the ability to give the thumbs down. Right. And I think that Frank Cho has a history of not listening to shitty fans or things that fans say. And in fact, his brand is very much flipping the bird to his haters. Right. It's a little strange that he's saying he that forced him to kind of drop it when he's constantly coming out with commissions that are the outrage commissions. Yes, dude. It's, it's literally a branding. He... He said he's got a Red Sonia cover coming up, and he's like, Outrage version coming soon. And I'm like, it's literally his thing. So for him maybe, to be like, oh, I caved because well, all these emails, it's like, are you kidding me? The only thing I could think of is maybe because it wasn't his own and his own character that he was doing it for Savage. He didn't want it to become a controversy for Eric. Possibly. You know what I'm saying? That's what I get out of it. Like, I don't know. I find it but interesting. Stuff, like too violent. Someone actually said it was too violent, too muscular. Not black I didn't, enough. I, I didn't, I didn't think he was muscular enough. Honestly, he's kind of a slim body dragon. Yeah, yeah I also honestly thought he needed more bulk, he need more sure. I, more um, shoulders, triangle shape. Come on, yeah. I, I wasn't thrilled with what the original cover was going to look like. To be honest, I mean, yeah, great ninjas, but it just seemed kind of like eh, it's really got nothing to do with Savage Dragon. He could have put any character on or any muscular guy with a fin on his head, and you know, it, yeah. And then the, the the new cover was even like more of a meh. This is kind of just done because he needs to get it out of the way. Yeah, so, phoned in. I don't know for sure. When you look at, I think we had talked about this to death, but the pinup he did years and years and years ago with Dragon and Smasher it was so awesome. Yeah, and what a, made an amazing cover. Mm-hmm. And uh, like we also said, looking at what he's done for like the Harley Quinn covers and stuff, it's like, man, like if you don't want to do it, don't do it, but don't phone it in. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like no one's holding a gun to your head. Like you know, just uh, say no. Say no if you can't do it or don't have time or whatever else. Or you're but, not feeling uh, it. And what, what, it could... Go ahead. I was saying if you're not feeling it, you know, if you just don't want to do it, don't do it. Yeah. What kills me was like the next month, you know, uh, Dave Johnson was like, well, I would have done it if you would have asked. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> save him for 300, Eric. Yeah, save, him, yeah. save him for 300, dude. The only comment I have on the J. Scott Campbell situation is I will mm -hmm. say this. Um, in the end, what Campbell did was he basically opened up, used, it, used the uh, the whole situation to like get other people to draw their versions of the cover. And I think in the end, what that accomplished was it showed me that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people out there who can draw attractive uh, women... 
in poses and covers who do it a lot better than J. Scott Campbell. Man, it's just a product of his time, Jim. He's just a product of his time, dude. He just likes some Victoria's Secret 90s catalog bony. I'm not talking about poses. I'm talking about there are lots of people who can draw that exact same thing way better. Well, that can be said about anything. And it's and I think it's a kind of a a taste thing, but I don't know. There's few artists that got to the level that that guy did, so I can't knock them. I just think that honestly, if you're going to clown your fans, clown them all the way. Like I just think like don't don't be like, "Oh, I'm better them back off." Oh, it's like, "No, just do it, dude. Do that Malcolm cover. If someone's saying it's too violent, make it more violent." You know? Like I'm just saying like don't you know, hold honestly, back. Honestly, if I'm a professional, I think I'm just staying off Twitter. I just don't see anything besides promoting your stuff, like promote it and don't respond. Just jump off. I know you, Raven, you probably feel different because you're on it and you're a creator, but I just feel like getting people's opinions on your stuff, just, it's not worth it. I don't feel different. Like, Craig, what's funny is I actually totally agree with you. It is at these peewee levels that I'm at, it's a necessity because I I can't afford a social media manager. However, let me say that I agree with you. I actually think that North American comics pros are absolutely way too uh, out there. I think they need to have a private account that they just interact publicly with their friends and family so that, like, maybe, like, you know, they can have a social media life but not have, like, fans on there be like, oh, look at him, he's always eating hot dogs and he's not making a new (laughs) issue. You know what I mean? And, like, I think that they should have their private social media account so that they can enjoy themselves. And I think that when it comes to interaction with the public, you have that sloppy mess that you don't necessarily have with other, like, form, form like, uh, entertainment, necessarily. I, I just feel like, you know, the people with the voices are people that are complaining. If you like something, you're not, you know, a lot of times people aren't really going to speak up. It's the stuff that, you know, people t- tend to be louder when it's stuff they're dissing or think they're going to get a rise out of somebody. Well, sure. So, you know, for everyone that hates the cover and is posting about it, you know, there's might be... 10 additional people that like it aren't really saying anything because they just don't care enough to, to say it on Twitter. Craig, to perfectly highlight what you're saying, it is, you know, for one, you could say, oh, Craig's dismissing valid complaints as a vocal minority, but I'm going to push back against that and agree with you because I do think that the silent majority typically is, con- like, content. And what I'm talking about with entertainment, just generically speaking here, is like if you think about like Smash Brothers, like the world's most popular right now fighting game, right? It sold more than Street Fighter. So it's actually officially the number one. And it's made millions and millions and millions, so much money, like the biggest fucking thing in the world. And nobody is more dissatisfied, bitchy, and malcontent than Smash Brothers fans. They get online, they fucking hate everything. They are constantly dissatisfied and constantly angry. However, that's what you see on social media. If you back up and you say, yeah, but wait a minute, hold on, let's look at sales. Most people are thrilled and are not saying shit. They're not logging on. They're not saying anything. So I do think that it's like this thing where you really kind of need to have these pros maybe have a social media manager, dude. Like have somebody, because I think a PR person, on the one hand, it's cool to see pros like talk to people and be like, oh, uh, hey, how about you go fuck yourself? Like, that's awesome. I actually like get a huge, like, I laugh. But then, unfortunately, the bad thing is, is that like a PR person would have the wherewithal to know that for every like person like me that's like, oh man, that is hilarious. He told that guy to go fuck himself. There's going to be like seven other people. Who are like, oh, dude, what a dickhead. Like, I'm right. never worried. Or, or going to repost it out of context. Yeah, yeah. I told you, I had that little, like, uh, dweeb, and he was talking to me about Eric. And he was like, well, I just don't like Eric because I think he's cruel to his fans unnecessarily. And I told the guy, I said, well, I've been, like, active in the Savage Dragon community for about, like, 10, 12 years now. 
And I said, I've never seen that. Like, I think he can be blunt and curt, like, when the moment calls for it. But And he doesn't pull his punches. But at the same time, I don't think he's cruel to his fans unnecessarily. Like, what the fuck? He gives his time all the time and, like, answers. Like, if anything, he talks to trolls and shit way more than he probably even should, right? But, like, I don't know, dude. People, the internet is weird. Like, people end up hating the idea of you. Right. And Jim, I'll just say when it comes to like J. Scott Campbell, what's weird is I see people hating like the idea of him. And it's like, dude, just just hate his art. Like, you don't have to hate the man. Like, it's so weird how like everyone has to hate like, oh, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't give a shit about the man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, let's just hate his art. Like, let's just talk about the work. It's like, you don't this guy doesn't have to be the devil just because you don't like his art, just say his art sucks and move on with your life. It's fine. And again, it's know. not really about that it sucks, is that he just does the same thing forever and doesn't change at all. One trick pony, dude. Drawing but the same thing he drew 25 years ago. Uh, it worked for him, and now yeah. he's got a following that expects that. And It's the same thing with music and bands, you know. It's the yeah. In fact, he actually drew... Bands that stay interesting evolve and the ones that keep pumping out the same old... His art was more diverse back when he had to do interiors, and now it doesn't have to be. I do. I'll agree. I think he was better when he was doing interiors. When he went full pinup, I think his, like, talent eroded just a bit. (laughs) I definitely love Cho Women. (laughs) I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Yeah, Cho Women are great, dude. I don't know, guys. Lots to think about. Thing about Frank Cho, I feel like too, is that he was drawn the more curvy woman before that was like as big. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're you're hundred percent right. Like people forget. Like you can read old wizard articles where just after the bad girl era, he was actually praised for more human looking women. Right. Right. Because there's clearly real anatomy in Frank's drawings. Like yeah. there's clearly an underdrawing and a skeleton, and the organs can all fit. And so it's just kind of funny to he see, like... Drew thicker women. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just kind of At funny At a time when it was, general. like, J. Scott Campbell women were the most popular. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny to see Frank lean into that J. Scott thing when, like, for a while he was being heralded as, like, yay, we're free from the J. Scott, like, waspy thin waist. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's got to be tough on these guys. I gotta imagine, like going from you know, J. Scott Campbell was like everyone loved his shit in the '90s, and then going from that to be kind of villainized. I mean, sure, is he at fault for some of it, and have things changed? But you know, I, I kind of feel for some of these guys. It's like you know, they don't know what their audience is now. Well, I, I definitely feel for him because it's kind of like the thing is, is that they still have fans, like you said, like. Their, their fans are very satisfied. And so the only thing that really changed is people who dislike them have a huge platform now. And so they can jump in and be like, yeah, but this fucking sucks. And everyone likes it as pervert and a scumbag. And it's kind of like, well, I mean, come on now. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean... Like I said, it's that need when people... It's that weird internet need. Yeah, I mean, I feel for these guys. I just think that, like, their audiences have, uh, you know, still retained after all these years. They're still very popular. Frank Cho clearly has tons of fans. So does J. Scott Campbell. But you just have a bigger platform for their people who don't like them. And it's that weird internet need, uh, I think, for people to villainize things that they don't hate. I mean, things that they don't like. So it's kind of like... Everything would be a little bit better if maybe people just focused on things they enjoyed or whatever else. Right. But then, again, internet, they drag well, in that hole. No one stays a top artist forever. I mean, Exactly. Exactly. Dude, you know, when we were started reading comics in the 90s, you know, you'd see Jack Kirby and you'd be like, ugh, that's a hold. You know, and, and things come back around and or people adjust. I mean, there's heartbreaking stories like Herb Trimpe trying to draw like Liefeld. You know, I, I hear mixed stories like about that. that. Apparently, he did that because he wanted to. Apparently really, that's, that's what he wanted to do. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't change to adapt. He just did it that way. I find that hard to believe, though. I, I'm going to adapt to look just like a Liefeld clone after 
maybe he saw something he liked and he decided to channel it. He saw sales. That's what he liked. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're cynical, Craig. You're cynical on my cynical show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what else? What do we got going next? Well, next I just want to say one me? last thing. I think Eric Larson, sure. to bring it back to Eric Larson, I think Eric handles this kind of stuff better or the best. Yeah. He basically ignores it and tells yep. you flat out, your ideas are terrible. Don't suggest them to me. <laughs> your terrible, I, terrible ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of his, uh, well, this is not a democracy. It's a dictatorship. And I'm yeah. like, that's that's great. It's and like, I think that's what people can't handle. Oh, he's so mean. He didn't <laughs> listen to my belly aching. He won't. He won't do the the, 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 the crossover I want. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys, like seriously, legitimately, on the internet, the craziest fucking thing. And if you look, this blanket statement applies to everything. Is people's ability to enact change through a computer dominates some people's behavior. And when they can't change you or a thing or whatever else simply by, like, typing into a computer, bro, they lose their fucking minds sometimes. And so, yeah, it's weird. I think people got weird sort of reactions to that. Craig, we got a new interesting conversation. Won't you, won't you give it to us? So, as you guys will hear, in just a few moments, we're going to be talking about the new issue of Savage Dragon. Which, all you listeners know by now, also doubles up as a North Force Zero issue. So our question is to you, uh, knowing right now that this is nothing more than a North Force Zero, with maybe murmurings of a potential series, uh, I'm not sure how serious it is, but you know, Eric's mentioned that it could be a series down the road. Our question posed to you, the listeners, would be... If you had your choice and North Force did come out as a separate series, who would you have as a creative team on it? And what kind of format or schedule would it come out as? You know, would it be double size issue? Uh, I don't know, digest or whatever. I, I have no idea. Or, or schedule, you know, we're talking quarterly, we're talking monthly. Uh, and who, you know, who's the art team? And, it, and the one rule we have here is it can't be Eric. Uh, give us an art team that doesn't involve Eric Larson. You so have to one, assume he's too busy. Right, especially with Ant and Savage Dragon at this point. Um, so let's go with that. And uh, One of you guys want to take a crack at that? Um, Jim? Well, I don't really... Hmm. This is always tough for me because I never really have anything off the top of my head, uh, creator-wise, that you know I haven't mentioned before. Um, I think, I think it would be interesting to have like a actual Canadian write the thing. Ooh. Trouble is, I can't think of any like. I mean, there are definitely lots of Canadian writers out there, tons, notable, tons, notable ones, but I can't think of any off the top of my head because, of course, I can't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lots of great Canadian talent out there, dude. But I think it would be interesting to have somebody who has you know some familiarity with the country, and. I think that would add a lot to it. I also have this weird notion that it really should just be a space book, even though it's about a Canadian super team. <laughs> it should basically always be set in space. Canadians in space. Basically, yes. Um, Very North Force. <laughs> um, I think art-wise, I mean, to, to, to play into that, like, like, like uh, that sci-fi angle that I want, you'd have mm-hmm. to get somebody like... Um, I hate always going back to this well, but I really love his art. Paul Pelletier. <laughs> I think he does. Who? Paul, Paul Pelletier was a... Um, Obviously, you don't go back to that well enough. Uh, yeah, I'm go gonna... go to that well more. <laughs> <laughs> so he did... Uh, I most know him from uh, CrossGen. Uh, he did this title called Negation, which took place primarily in space. And it was a big, big, big sci-fi series. It was basically like the adventures of a bunch of weirdos in the in the negative zone. Is basically the the short version of it, or not the or yeah. But he also did like runs on uh, uh, Exiles, which was a like a Marvel Universe like reality hopping series. He mm-hmm. did art on uh, Great Lakes Adventures uh, with Dan Slott uh, in the early two thousands. 
most recently he's been doing stuff in like uh, I think he drew Batgirl for a while. I think he did Aquaman before that. Mm-hmm. But he's just I just have always loved his art. He does he does really cool, uh, like he draws muscles really good. Is what I'm trying okay. what I'm trying to say. And that's sure. why I think he would actually look great drawing Dragon. Uh, I always suggest him as like an Eric replacement if that was ever necessary. That's that's mm-hmm. where I bring him up. I just think he would make it really neat, neat looking North Force, because his North Force is a bunch of weirdos, and I think a guy who can draw a bunch of weirdos, a bunch of very different looking characters, uh, he'd be a good choice. Now, if I can just think of a good writer, Ron Mars. Let's just go with Ron Mars. Ron Mars is great at everything. You don't, <laughs> you right. don't, want, you don't want Mark Millar? God no! Fuck no! <laughs> I mean, he's yeah, and he's Scottish. He should know Canada pretty well. Yeah, that's not how that works, <laughs> right? <laughs> what about you, Craig? Um, you know, I was thinking art. Do you remember that? Um, do you guys know who Dan McCade, McDade is? He no, did Jer- give us Jersey Gods. Oh, Jersey Gods. I'm familiar. I'm look with, at it. Familiar with it? Haven't read it. So Dan McDade, and I'm trying to think what other Ooh. comics he's done, but his art is pretty amazing, and I've been a big fan. Uh, so Jim, I'm looking. He did an IDW Judge Dread Mega City Zero artist. Oh, that guy, yeah. Um, yeah, this is good stuff, dude. His stuff is awesome, and I just would like to see more of it. Um, I don't know if there's any other big things that come across that he's done but uh anyway i would love to see him handle some eric larson characters um i actually got a savage dragon pinup uh uh, sketch by him at a convention once but yeah i'm a big fan uh in terms of writing i i don't know it's hard to picture someone else writing larson characters What's cool about this North Force, and this is for our listeners too, who hopefully will be replying to this, is that aside from what we get in North Force Zero, we kind of have a blank slate. So why don't you let your imagination run wild? Like, you don't have to have this be a Larson-style book. In fact, I would argue that Freak Force that we've been reading for the Savage Fincast Retros kind of is a little bit stronger for not trying to just ape Eric. You know what I mean? Right. So, who would you see complimenting your artist well? I don't know. Why, why don't you go ahead and you tell me? Oh, geez. Team book, Mark Millar. Even though it will incur the wrath. Are you? Are you really? Man. Really, Jim? <laughs> you really like <laughs> that guy's writing? No, I really, I, I like him 50-50. Like, he either knocks it out of the park or stinks it up. Um, you know what? I'm going to say, listen to this crazy pick. I'm going to say uh, Gerard Way, the dude that did Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah, he's a good choice. Yeah, he can do a team book very well. And I just finished his National Anthem uh, run, and I think that he would handle multiple characters because I think he can do distinct voices very well. Uh, he does clever dialogue well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that that guy plus your artist, knock it out of the park. Nice. Knock it out of the Craig, park. You said the artist's name was Ulysses Faranus, right? For what? Well, the artist you were picking. No, Dan McDade. Dan McDade. I don't think they did Mega City Zero. I'm going to do more research uh, on that. I don't know. I just looked at his wiki and it l- listed it. So Before M-C-D-A-I-D. Dan Before you go, Dave. Craig, I like what Jim did where he said he envisioned uh, his North Force as a space book. How do you envision your North Force? How do you, how do you see this coming together? Uh, like, what do you want out of it? Put me on the spot, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't want it to be anything like... I don't think it needs to be like so like Canada, Canada, Canada. And just treat it as like another superhero team. Um, I don't know though. I don't know. 
like I feel like if you put too much emphasis on them being Canadian, it's kind of like a little kind of over the, over the top. But I really haven't put much thought into to what I would like. It's interesting. It, they just have to be cool, fight big characters, be the Avengers of you know the Savage Dragon universe. So basically, Why, what do you what do you basically think? they're just have them be based out of Canada? But just deal with the same level threats that like American teams. Yeah, they're would. they're not just oh we only fight the Canadian right villains you know and I don't know it, it's just just they're just the Avengers basically they just happen to be based in Canada. I mean that makes sense that that would be an interesting take basically uh yeah exactly that instead of instead of being like Alpha Flight who only deal with Canada problems or what have you. Just That's a good take. Global. They're a global force. They just happen to be based out of Canada. That's Yeah, that's a good take. And that's surprising to me because, I mean, small brain take here, but obviously I think Canada when I think <laughs> North Force. So, yeah, that's a good twist. To have them be global. And, like to say of North, to, to hold North Force in a JLA regard, yeah, I'm kind of surprised at that. That's a good one. That's a good take. Am I going? I'd yeah, like, go, yeah for go, it. go for it. All right, baby. I got a dream team for you guys. So I'm getting Doug Menke, uh, M-A-H-N-K-E. I'm probably saying it wrong. Uh, you know him from just shit tons of DC. DC's his bread and butter. But uh, I'm trying to think of prominent DC work. He's, I mean, he's just done everything. He's a DC workhorse. What's he's been name? with them. Uh, Doug Mankey, M-A-H-N-K-E. Oh, M-A-N-K-E? It's M-A-H-N-K-E. That name but, is very familiar. Uh, is, he's, an old, he's an old head. He's been with DC a long time, so this is not a fresh face. This is a guy that's been doing... But here's my choice why. Here's why. Because I think Doug does superhero shit just goddamn fantastic. Uh... Obviously, he's at DC. He can do a shit ton of uh, body types and personality. And he's like old school DC. Yeah. Where like you're going to see a fat, bald guy and you're going to see an old woman. And what's cool about uh, North Force is it's got a lot of versatility in its cast, right? Like there's an old woman and there's a native and there's all kinds of like... You know, there's sort of a more, like, fat, like, lesbian character and, like, not fat, but stalky, like, more, like, you know, big. Butchie, and I think yeah. Doug, yeah, I think Doug would do a really good job of making everybody, like, distinct. Like, he does all kinds of, like, body diversity. Did Doug co-create the mask? I don't know if he did, but he definitely should be the artist you think of when you think of... Um, I primarily know him for Major Bummer. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, he also did that Superman story, that well-known, like, what's so funny with Truth, Justice, and the uh, American Way uh, with Manchester, that introduced Manchester Black. Oh, that one, yes. Yeah, so Doug is super old-school DC, and he's doing a shit ton of, like, but, like, Doug is one of those guys that, like, he's in, he's fucking incredible. He's, like, Greg Capullo level of, like, rendering yeah. and just, and but at the same time. Yes, he did create the mask. He created it. Yeah, he's a, he, well, co-created. He was co-created. Like, okay. Yeah. So Doug kicks ass. So Doug is my artist. I'm choosing him because I think that he can draw a shit ton of heroes together, looking awesome. He can do a ton of body diversity and stuff like that. Now, for my writer, I'm going to get Pete Milligan. Right. Oh, Milligan. Yeah, that's a good choice. So the reason I'm choosing him is because he. In his run on Ecstatics, it was X Force, then it became Ecstatics. He did a uh, soap opera, like superhero soap opera, really well, right? Yeah, yeah, I liked Ec- Ecstatics a lot. Yeah, he did, the, and the, again, the characters, the personality of the Ecstatics characters was so good. And so now you're kind of seeing my vision for my North Force is you've got this like crazy superhero rendered stuff where everybody is like, you know, just rippling with muscles and like beautiful and dynamic and stuff. But then you've got Pete Milligan writing their kind of soap operatic lives 
because everybody here has secret identities. So it's very kind of classic, like superhero soap opera. And like in this issue, not to jump too far ahead, but they talk about their problems with their personal lives and stuff like that. And that struck a chord with me. I was thinking, man, you know, if I was going to read a whole book ongoing of North Force, it would be full of these people trying to juggle their lives and their superhero shit. And I think that would be a good contrast to what we get in Dragon, where, like, he's just Dragon all the time. So that's my that's my North Force, bros. That's it. Yeah, uh, that actually sounds pretty awesome. Thank you. I, I do, sounds good. I, I do like Milligan's writing, and uh, I found it interesting you bring up uh, X-Force Ecstatics, because, uh, uh, yeah, that would be probably a good template to follow yeah man absolutely it's like, that so was long ago now too when you think crazy about how long those ago came out dude i had all those issues i got rid of them and i should have bought the omnibus when it came out and i didn't and now i'm kind of because i feel like i want to read them again it, it it's good it holds up i was reading it the other day and i was just thinking to myself man i care more about mr sensitive than like what happened prob- to all those characters I think. they died and went to hell <laughs> Is that true? And, yeah, and then they came back. But, like, and I, I tried to read the new stuff, and it's by Pete Milligan, and Mike Alred was drawing it. But I was like, you know what? I like it better that they died and went to hell. I'm just going to leave it. That's where they their story ended for me. Even the green guy? What was his name? Bloop? Dupe. Uh, Dupe lived. Dupe. But I never Dupe understood. Dupe still shows up occasionally. Yeah, He's like the slimer of the Marvel universe. <laughs> he is, dude. Somebody just put a bunch of lump potato lumps on Slimer and was like, "This is a character." <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you say, guys? Well, I say before we leave, tell people to send their interesting conversation answers too. That's going to be savagefincast at gmail dot com. You can write in with your answer to our topic or send in a topic of your own to suggest. And uh, we might very well use it. Um, But, yes, write in. I want to read six letters next time. Uh, We enjoy your takes, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So with that said. As you were. I think it's time. I think it's time for... I'm so hungry. A little bit of meat and potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. We've got like three different comics to cover. Oh, wait, it's just the same cover. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> the North Four Zero has got a little extra, which I thought was interesting. So why don't we start off with the covers? Yeah, man. Is that all um, of- I got to tell you, do you guys ever unfortunately wind up at the image uh, solicitations and see the comments? Uh, Sometimes. Sometimes. It's a nightmare. I don't recommend it. Yes. Uh, People were (laughs) shitting. So let's talk about it. So let's talk about it. People were shitting all over this cover. And I love this cover. You know what? Not that you're ever going to listen. But fuck you, random commenters. People who... (laughs) People who say, is that Guardian? Bro. That, that's getting so annoying. Alpha Flight. Bro. So, tangential to this cover, I uh, recently did... How do I phrase this? I did a little bit of research because I was curious about something. Um, so, uh-huh. I often try to promote Savage Dragon on the internet, of course. And when sure. I do so, I like to um, uh, so, uh, include imagery in order to help, help entice. Sure. Smart. And so I try to get covers with, like, lots of weirdos on them, lots of characters, so that people can go, oh, look at all these characters that are in Savage Dragon. Funny thing about Savage Dragon, because Eric doesn't phone it in, there are actually super few, like, team shots in yeah. Sa- on Savage Dragon covers. Yeah, um, not a lot of pinup type things. Yeah, so there's, like, seven covers with Dragon and, like, a bunch of other people. And one of them is the Vicious Circle, the other one, one of them is, like, all the Image United guys, and one of them is North Force. So there's only, like, four covers with, like, a group running at you. 
Uh, in in 30 years, he's only gone to that well four times. Yeah, there, there's the SOS group shot from issue 40, I think. There's the running at your cover from 115, the double wraparound. And then there's... Um, there was a Malcolm and Angel and everybody running at uh, Freak Force coming at you very recently, like back in like two forty something. I forget exactly which which issue, off the top mm-hmm. of my head. But that's it. That's all there are. So this cover that we have here on two fifty nine is highly unique, one of only seven in existence. <laughs> I also like probably unique is that they're not really coming at you; they're running past you. Right. <laughs> I like that. I like it, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, solid. To me, it's a kick-ass cover. Uh, I think North Force all have very cool and interesting superhero designs, and I fucking think this is a badass cover. I like the North Force logo. Yeah. It's good, Clean. right? Clean, yeah. yes. Easily read. It's neat. What do you guys think of Eric doing this little... Ex- not- I don't know if you call it an experiment, but doing the North Force Zero with the kind of just a little bit different. It's a little uh, cheeky. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's not something like I'm not going to go out of my way and buy both because I don't feel it necessary. Uh huh. Because even though there are differences between the two issues, like dialogue wise, captioning wise, uh, the character bios, that sort of thing. It isn't enough to be different. What about you, you, Craig? Do you think it confuses the shit out of people who aren't Savage Dragon fans to see these two side by side? Probably. It probably confused people. I know know at least one person who who has... um, See, Comixology has a subscription-like function where you can checkbox a series, and basically on day of release, it will automatically buy it for you. And they were fucking confused because because North Force is actually filed underneath the Savage Dragon banner, and so they got charged for both issues automatically, and they were actually a little bit pissed that they had been charged for the same book twice. I had to explain That's to them. That's kind of that, annoying. I had yeah. to explain to them that they are different, just not dramatically so. If you're not that big a fan, it's not different enough for you to be like, oh, yes, please charge me for a whole new book. Yeah, especially when we're talking, what, four bucks? I mean... It will make it. It could make sense if there is a series to follow, to have this zero issue act as the the lead in. I guess, but if you're a digital reader, not into like the collectability, and you're just right. getting Savage Dragon already, then it's kind of annoying. I think it's an interesting experiment. I don't but, know if it was worth the effort. I th- I think it was because I think regardless of of you know how we react to it having a north force zero is going to sell way more copies than just selling a 259 and so if it brings more people to check it out and maybe pick up savage dragon then hey or drums up more sales than but is it going to lead people savage dragon because if i recall correctly the issue doesn't like end with to be continued in savage dragon or anything yeah, that's a little weird, isn't it? Yeah, the I would call I, that a drop ball. Yeah. The only thing I could say is that Malcolm's so heavily featured in it. Yeah. And the characters, like the 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 their profiles, talk about their first appearances in Savage Dragon. That it might lead someone to want to read more Savage Dragon. But I well, don't know. I also, think. Good. No, no, you go ahead. Also, one one last thing I was just say is also it just more shops are going to pick up this issue and it features Malcolm. So just because it's an issue zero, it's going to get ordered way more. Right. What I what I just like to say that I, I'm glad that the experiment exists. I think that unfortunately, when you do anything, bro, dude, I only have twelve hundred pages of my comic and people are telling that's only like thirty three issues and people are telling me it's too overwhelming. I can't read it. And it's like I hear it all the time. And so when you have a long running series, like dude, you have to do stuff. You, you have it is necessity. Especially you have Especially if you're the same artist and writer and you're not switching. You, like, right. Like but, spawn. Well there's no that's the thing is books that shuffle have the oh guess what? 
Greg Capullo returns, New and it's a headline team. getter. Yeah, yeah. Whereas people will very quickly write you off when you are the same creator as, oh, just more Savage Dragon. Oh, just more One Piece. Oh, and it's like any long-running series has this issue, right? Right. And so, to me, this experiment is absolutely necessary. It's absolutely vital. And I do think that it was good. I think, Jim, actually, I'm glad you brought up the digital collectors thing because I hadn't thought of it. It's actually a super shitty bargain for, like, digital collectors. For me personally, being a physical collector, I don't mind it at this point in time because, A... It helps the book. B, I mean, bro, when it comes to Savage Dragon, I've collected everything. So, like, to snap up, like, one extra issue it doesn't hurt my wallet and it doesn't, like, make me mad, right? So, like, I personally don't care. And fans that don't like it have a choice. He never sold it as anything different than what it is. He always said, no, this is just the same issue with, like, bios. That being said, I do wish that it had made more of an effort to sell Malcolm 2, you know? Yeah. Like, we had North Force bios that I think are fucking awesome. The bios are really good. I wish there had been at least a Malcolm bio, right? Right. Isn't it weird how there's house ads for, like, three different image comics, but you would think he would have put a house ad for Savage Dragon in it? Right. (laughs) Or, like, a big back cover ad or something. Yeah follow more Avengers of Malcolm or whatever. Yeah. He could even just like he, update his old, like remember the like ad that's like, uh, just hey, the little dad. Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one. All he'd have to do is just Photoshop in a more recent cover of Savage Dragon and then boom, still run that ad. Cause that's a great yeah. ad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess think, I feel like that's a little bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah, I just wish, as much as I do like it and it doesn't bother me, I wish that it had worked harder to sell Savage Dragon 2. Right. You blew it! <laughs> so, well, uh, that, be- <laughs> that being said, uh, how you guys feeling about, like, you know, jumping into this, this double-page spread here? Well, let's, let's talk about the first uh, singles page spread, which is different depending on which issue you bought or right. if you bought two. I mean, one's titled Welcome to North Force, and the inside cover is like the green Savage Dragon, and then the other, you know, the North For- Force one is kind of got the different inside cover, and it's titled The New Recruit. Um, it also has some of these caption boxes on the North Force one, which I really liked reading the north when i read the north i read both of them or i compared them side to side and i thought the story read better in the north force issue and i'm not sure why because the north force issue is intended to be read as if it was like your you first don't know issue. much about it's it. like you don't know yeah. anything about savage dragon uh this is the first issue of north force that you're buying you have never read savage dragon before so i get this it, but is it, to explain what you don't know i get it but i feel like it wouldn't have hurt to put into the savage dragon i feel like it kind of reads a little better with the captions in there even if it is a little bit of a we know this already i'll agree Um, craig i think omitting them yeah i just say i think omitting them didn't really help right like like even on that first page on the north force issue you get his kind of internal thought this is this is not a good idea i think you add something i wouldn't have known like he's hesitant about it Otherwise. Is that is that Malcolm's like narration? Like I guess that's kind of the thing. It's like is Malcolm the narrator on this? Oh, is that what you're getting at maybe? That's not Malcolm saying this is not a good idea. Well, I guess that's the thing is it's not overly abundantly clear who the narrator is because it's like this is not a good idea and then when you flip it open it's like the person talking is talking about Malcolm. I'm pretty sure it's Eric. Yeah, or do you think it's the omnipresent is the, the omnipresent narrator? It's not yeah, the I, Canadian? No. I I don't think it's one of the characters. Yeah, then, it's a little confusing, but But then who is that this is excruciating? Like, I guess I I had a little it's bit Eric, of a problem Eric is saying that. 
Do you think that's it? I think that's a joke, yeah. <laughs> See, I took it as Malcolm. I saw someone else having a little bit of a tiny bit of a struggle there where they were like, who is the narrator? I don't think it hurts the comic, but I don't think it necessarily like... I think having maybe like the narrator not necessarily... Because I think it kind of dances a little bit between just your omnipresent narrator to a narrator that is definitely like in the moment. Because the narrator, like, this, excruci- this is excruciating, is referring to... Malcolm's one side conversation. It's a joke. It's like the narrator mm. is sick of this, just like everyone else is. Yeah, I didn't read it that way when at first, so it's interesting. You read it as Malcolm, right? Yes. See, what's funny is I read it as Malcolm too, but then on the next double page spread, those seem like someone talking about Malcolm. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of like, to me, it jumped a little bit around. Right. All right or maybe well, I'm a dumbass. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. But uh, let's talk about that double-page spread that I uh, you seem really eager interrupted it. on. <laughs> well, it's just, I love it, dude. Uh, like, this is the first time you see North Force out of their costumes, and I was pretty surprised. About who did was you who? Try to, did you try to guess who was who without reading yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Were you totally off like I was? Big time, dude. I was wrong as hell on almost all of it. Yeah, well, I think the the only one I got was like the Canadian. I think it's kind of like this is a really interesting team. Because like when you see North Force in costume, you don't necessarily get that it's a team of mostly women. True. Yes. And when you see them out of uniform, it's just like, oh, shit, like, it's just Francois and the Canadian, you know? <laughs> like, they're the only dudes. Um, yeah, I love Francois, the- too, does not, I was not a type of guy I pictured to be in the jet costume. Yeah, he's not svelte enough. At all, dude, right? <laughs> yeah, and the night being... Uh, the night being the uh, like uh, more like uh, butchy type lesbian, right. I was just like, "Nice dude, I like it." And then the got... feral character is like an elderly woman. <laughs> yeah, dude, we were lusting after her. <laughs> I was like, "Uh oh, I got that Gmail fever." I guess she still has white hair. I know, that dude. That, that was the secret. That was the secret. It was so funny. I was like, oh, dude, her white hair is just old people hair. <laughs> and then another Savage Dragon female character that turns into kind of a muscular male character. Yeah. Which I didn't about? see that coming. Um, talking about the Nina Red Cloud turning into Grizzly. Yeah. It's awesome, dude. Like a werebear. And it seems totally different because she seems pretty straight laced. And Grizzly comes off to me kind of like a bad rock type character. At least that's what I thought, but maybe oh, I was like totally a, b- wrong. a bit of a dumbass. Yeah, like a, a party kind of guy. Maybe it was the glasses. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Craig sees those glasses and thinks party time. That's right. Um. Yeah, dude. Uh, I did not see uh, Northern Light like flaming Skullhead. I love like, that have, you're still calling that character Northern Light. <laughs> right. Really? Because, I don't know, I guess I called that one. I, yeah, I that was one of the only ones for me that I thought I knew. Well, just, you know, burning the afro off is all. It is. It is. It does raise a bunch of questions. Like, I assume her hair is still there when she deflames. No. It's kind of like Ghost Rider, I think. Ghost Rider. That's exactly it. It's a Ghost Rider. It just flames off. It's fucking awesome, dude. I used to, as a kid, love Ghost Rider. And the idea of just your powers just burning your fucking flesh off is just fucking metal as hell. I thought the Canadian was going to actually be a pasty dude. (laughs) Me too, dude. No, it's just grease paint. He just turns into some frost creature or something. I don't think he's got snow powers. I think he literally just cakes on white shit. 
I you think, think so? Just, you think yeah. it's paint? I think it's I do. just paint. I think it's just paint. Or it's or, part of his costume, like it's form fitting or something. Yeah, that's kinda, yeah. That, it's kind of genius that you'd paint your lower jaw skin to kind of keep people off your trail. Makes you wonder why Batman doesn't do it, right? Remember in Batman purple. when remember in Batman when Vicky Vale identified him by his chin? Yeah. <laughs> Which you totally would too. <laughs> How many people recognize you when you have like a face mask on? Yeah. It's pretty bad. Um at any rate, I loved him out of their costumes. I I was like shocked. I, I just wasn't expecting it to just jump well for one, all right, we gotta talk about this too. Guys like uh what would you think of the uh, whole like yeah, dude? We we have alter egos. Like it, that's not a thing that's in Savage Dragon a ton. Of course, Star had an alter ego, you know, sort of a covert secret identity. Right. But like the bulk of Savage Dragon characters were freaks in Chicago, so they were just like fucking super all the time, right? Right. H- Hordus, you know, can't like turn into a normal woman. You know, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I wasn't expecting these guys to have the whole, like, secret identity. And I damn sure wasn't expecting the entire team to have secret identities. What do you guys think of that? Well, I was just going to say, I think it's pretty funny. I think uh, <laughs> I think it's a more traditional super team in that regard. Yeah. I was surprised. I'm just saying, like, it's very kind of like... That's why I went with Doug Menke on my book. I was like, dude, this is kind of like your kind of Marvel DC kind of thing. Right. More more DC than Marvel even. That's true. Marvel had a bunch of guys who didn't have secret identities. Of course, even back in the early days, characters like Thor and Captain America and Iron Man all had secret identities. It was Don't you right. feel like they kind of moved away from that though? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's no longer the case by like d- decades at this point. And so it's kind of funny that here's Eric is introducing this brand new super team and he chooses to me in my mind to go very throwback by having everybody just, oh, we all got secret lives, dude. Yeah. We all lie to our families. <laughs> they don't all lie to their families. <laughs> just, just some of them. Some of North force has that, uh, secret. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, the huge traffic jam. <laughs> That, that whole invincible thing going on, right? <laughs> so it's cool, and uh, yeah, man. I I gotta say, I like the look of him. I like the all these characters just uh, all have like different kind of like uh, personalities, even in their expressions. Like uh, Connie Chin, like the next page, past the splash page, like you can see in Connie's face, like she's always smiling, like she seems nicer. Uh, you know, like, uh, fucking Nina Red Cloud seems mean all the time. <laughs> She's kind of like a mean character, you know? Right. It's just kind of like Francois seemed like a dick on the first page, but, like, dude, he seems totally cool the rest of the time. Like, his thumbs up, like, just this goofy-looking dude. A lot of armor amongst this team, too. A lot of what? A lot a lot of armor, a lot of like kind of oh, an yeah, Iron Man kind of thing. Costumes. Uh, yeah, because um, only a few of them have superpowers. Right. Uh, you got Nina that becomes a bear. You know, uh, Chao Sing Huang becomes uh, like Raptor. You've got Danielle Davis becomes a flame. So those three are sort of like morphing yeah. into their alter, alter egos. Right. And then what's funny is uh, Michael, the Canadian, he doesn't really, he doesn't really get into his thing. Yeah. I, like I also, assume he's like a super soldier, is basically my assumption. Like a Canadian Captain America? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah, I can I can see that. Well, I'm just saying we still kind of really don't, like, know, really, you know? But what are you guys' vibes? What are you getting off of these? What are you getting from these characters already? I mean, I... I, I go ahead, Craig. I was just going to say, one thing I, I thought was cool was kind of the close-up on the night where you can see in the armor and you can see her face. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a cool look. Um, honestly, from this issue, I didn't get that much out of, like, 
we got a few pages of of like a little bit about their background, but I need more to to, to judge this this group on. See, I uh, I feel like God. Yeah, I'll continue. I just, the last, I just I feel like Grizzly has kind of got the most spotlight, but the rest of the guys need more. I personally don't have a problem with it being kind of vague at this point because it is primarily an introduction to the team, not so much the individuals. Uh, we get enough to give show that they're all kind of different people, have different right. like different uh, personalities and agendas, um, but they all seem to be like all for that superhero life. It's just that they all have uh, secret identities, which is what makes them kind of different than what the usual like Savage Dragon like superhero. Uh, is I think you get a lot dude I think you get like kind of like it paints like a, a lot of really cool world building kind of like how like even this page of heads which by the way I loved this layout where it's just like a page of all heads the profiles yeah or like, the, or where the, they're which just, one are you talking about the profiles uh, or the, the, the well there's page. actually there's three pages of heads which is kind of funny well, the one where it's like stacked heads, like there's like a column of heads, and only Connie is like standing. Malcolm's standing oh, at the yeah, top, yeah. and Connie's standing yeah, yeah. at the bottom. But yeah. like, I love this layout because it was just kind of like a. It's funny because it's talking heads literally, but it's an interesting layout, so it makes it like, you know, work right. Well, it, it is pretty fun when you look at, you know, rarely do you have as many pages of just talking heads as you have in this issue but he does it in so many varied ways you know between the double page splash then you got the one with just the kind of uh rectangles the the mm-hmm. face is straight on and then mm-hmm. you got the splash with all the floating heads which is kind of a neat thing and then the next Love page it. is the profile is all stacked up so he always keeps it interesting it's not four pages of just front facing panels you know right um it, it, that's pretty cool yeah, dude, I loved it. I was like, wow. Again, like from a comic artist kind of a thing, I'm just like, dude, I always say cartoonists should read Savage Dragon because it's like here is four pages of talking heads, but it's not talking heads in a traditional sense like right. once. <laughs> yeah, it's something like visually interesting. An amateur artist would definitely have done just like those front-facing panels like four times. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think there's cool world building. Like you were saying, like you guys were like, ah, I need more. But like to me, it's kind of like they paint such over these few pages. I feel like you get such a good like vibe of like, okay, well they're all doing their own thing. But then you've got the Canadian who is kind of like just leader vibes out the wazoo, like uniting the Avengers, the Canadian Avengers here, and like they're they've got like the whole like Francois talking about like, oh, you know, you've got like. Uh, Raptor talking about like unique like things we don't know about as Savage Dragon readers like oh when F- Wendell writes robot raiders kidnap the prime minister's daughter so it's like very Canadian but then like Francois Ryder Nathan is like oh the first time we met Raptor is when the Lava Lords attacked which is very Savage Dragon right yeah and so I, I love to me how it like w- there's a lot of world building with these characters in a short amount of time like even like uh them just talking about like they just you know even though the canadian tried to unite everybody like they just happened to meet grizzly in a bar when she like flipped out and like mauled a dude <laughs> right i i guess i was hoping for a little bit more on like what their capabilities are like show you know instead of just having them punching show me what jet does does he have like little contraptions or is he just flying through people at like you know, the speed of light or whatever. What is Bluebird like? All right, she's got an armor. She's got armor with wings, but what what can she do? You know, besides just I, fly. I will totally uh, agree with you there. Same thing yeah. with the knight. Like, give me a little like taste of what their each individual power is. Um, totally agree with know. you there, dude. Especially yeah, in, like would have been great like to this, see him. That's... Sorry, yep. Go ahead. No, I just say, especially in like an issue zero where you're trying to like really showcase them, um, which is why I like that the issue zero has the profiles. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gives you that extra little, you know, stuff to read about them that maybe you're not seeing on the panel. But I do really want to see it. Totally agree. Yep. I, I don't disagree at all. Like, I want to see, just like Super Patriot's clacky gun arms, 
you know, just like Mighty Man, like, you know, just, like, flying and just busting ass, like, kicking people all over. Like, just like, dude, let's see the knight chopping someone in half. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's, so let's see like, it. Like, Blue Jay and the Jet both basically have the same power. Like, show me how they're different, you know? Agreed, yeah. Totally agreed. Does she shoot, like, metal feathers like Archangel or something like that? Or blasters <laughs> or something? I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, can she cut things with that? I, I just wanted to know a little bit more. I, I, you know, it would have been nice to get some of that rather than just them punching. So, uh... I think this bit with the uh, pool is funny because, again, we're talking about Malcolm's, uh, the like I said, the secret chosen one superpower of aiming. <laughs> yeah, it, I like it that. It kind of <laughs> brings it back to that. It comes off as a pool hustle. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like those little callbacks because at times, even long-time readers, we forget that he's got those abilities. Just like once in a while, Dragon would, like, you know, spit a bullet or something or a coin and it would go through someone's head or you know what i mean like the super accuracy and and the ability to you know uh shoot something with their breath or something like that you know what i mean yeah and i love the texture on the pool table yeah yeah there's a definitely some interesting coloring going on to give it some of that uh that textured look and you you know eric adds a little bit of a the uh a few lines to make it look like felt, which uh, is a nice look. It's funny how they go out of their way to introduce this Seamus pug. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems like North Force has somewhat of a support team in general. They are a, you know, I believe they're a um, government-funded super team, so they got helicopters and regular people doing stuff. In turn, Emergency! Right. Emergency! <laughs> You know, along those lines, though, Craig, I will say that I, I do love that we we get just a taste of, like, you know, Grizzly, like, you know, bearing out. Like, we get a becoming a bear, and then, like, the fro burning off. <laughs> just a taste. You get just a, I like the transformation. Just a taste. Right. Um... D- What were you saying? I was just going to say, did you guys expect uh, Malcolm's don't run off into space? I mean, Malcolm. Fucking Maxine's uh, don't run off into space to be a uh, foreshadowing? Yes. <laughs> you did? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, mean, I had a lot of thoughts about how this issue was going to end, and that was definitely, like, one of them. Mm-hmm. Look how annoyed North Force looks in that first panel. Also, like if, anyone, all... if anyone ever calls me hollandaise sauce, it's over. <laughs> the worst pet name. <laughs> what are you, is this the first time we're seeing the maple leaf from above? Uh, you mean the plane? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the North North Force has like a Quinjet. I mean, I don't think we've actually seen it before because last time it was a helicopter. No, I've yeah, yeah. seen it before. I feel like the issue after the helicopter showed up. But yeah, sure. it's pretty much a Quinjet, yes, with, with Canadian. Bright red, easy target. Canadian Quinjet. Yeah, uh, this is where we, like, the sequence after Malcolm gets done with his phone call, we get a nice little... See, what's funny is that, like, Malcolm's getting judged the whole time, right? Right, because he's, <laughs> he's being recruited. Right. And, uh, yeah, that, taking that phone call from Maxine surprisingly grates North Force. <laughs> They're kind of dicks about it. I love how you don't hear what Maxine is telling Malcolm, but it's like, no, turn on the news if you don't believe me. No, we're not. I wouldn't do that even if it was part of their initiation. <laughs> so you know what she's asking, what she's saying. I, I got to say, Malcolm is starting to get a bit of his dad in him about how dismissive he is about, like, these team organizations uh, when he says I won't be gone one minute longer than I have to it's like this entire operation is like beneath him like he does not give a shit about it's hanging that, out with these people 
It's not that. I think he just, like, is not going to turn his back on his family, you know? Like, he's not going to go running off into space. Right. Sometimes you, sometimes you, sometimes you don't get a choice. Sometimes space abducts you. Sometimes space chooses you. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that, Jim. <laughs> sometimes you don't choose space. Sometimes space <laughs> chooses you. I gotta say, on all these pages, Grizzly just steals the show for me. Grizzly's the coolest. I oh. mean, of North Force, Grizzly's definitely the coolest. Really? Because I actually think the Knight is the coolest. Grizzly's just the most probably uh, visually interesting. Qu- quick, more cool. quick, quick question. Book. Quick, quick question. Um, back to that. Uh, the you only hear one side of the conversation. Uh-huh. Uh, you guys are, we're pretty sure that Maxine is telling you, asking if he's going to a strip club, right? No, it's an I orgy. Was orgy. Orgy, yeah. Right, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Same deal. Because <laughs> I think Maxine would totally be okay with him going to a strip club. <laughs> She'd probably be okay with the orgy. Yeah, well, she would be, but Malcolm's not into it. He's scared. He's got scary he's tendencies. He's scared, he just... He doesn't like it. Monogamous. <laughs> he is monogamous. Um, well, except for that one Monogamous. <laughs> um, yeah, dudes. I, I got to say, I like, uh, I think uh, the coolest visual. I, I'm sorry. I think the coolest visual North Force is Flame Skull. Really? All day I don't long. think it's Grizzly's ass on that panel. Grizzly's ass on that panel is awesome. <laughs> Don't jump ahead. I want to talk about that ass in a minute. <laughs> but no, look at like I I'm going to make my case. Like flip the page and then how badass who's front and center but Flame Skull even getting to yell, "Let's do this." Flame Skull and her big titties. Yes, sir. I mean, Canadian yeah. and Knight and uh Raptor are sort of jumping to their deaths, but uh <laughs> You gotta assume they can take it. Is all. It's a great splash page, though. I fucking Malcolm's love this. Got his page. awkward jump. He's just sort of falling, you know. Whoa. Maybe they're just dot falling down, and then they're gonna get caught by a jet and bluebird or blue jay before they hit the ground. Jim, you know what the internet will never appreciate? What? That uh, Eric gave the night. Uh, Unisex chest plate. Didn't didn't do boob armor. Correct. Yep. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, the internet will never give him kudos for that, but he deserves it. Boob plates. Boob plate. Nah, dude. He didn't, he I, didn't make her like you know, half you know naked. You know what's like funny. Red Sonya. It's actually kind <laughs> of funny. Um, I was I was I was reading about this on Twitter. There's no real historical, like, boob armor because women didn't fight in armor. But realistically, boob armor makes sense uh, just to protect a woman's chest because compressing the chest is very dangerous. Sure. I am too afraid to have an opinion, so I won't <laughs> say shit. You're canceled. I f- yeah, I feel like someone you will be up. like, Actually, You're wrong. There was a ton of boob armor everywhere. You're an idiot. I'm not going to say anything. Um, <laughs> now, I love this splash page. I, f- I feel like, you know what? Say what you will about this issue. Bro, I feel like we get a ton of great splash pagey goodness. You know, it's kind of cool. You to almost see- have to with a team. Yeah. It's really cool to see aliens being a threat again. Yes. Um, especially dude. their little uh, uh, disc UFOs. They're very reminiscent of the... Uh, of the Martians, or at least how Eric would draw their ships. You talking about Mars Attacks Martians? Yeah, the ones uh, who were yeah. way back during like uh, Savage World, when uh, Cyberface had them under control and would use them to harry Dragon all the time. Yeah, I love the insides of those ships. They're all like the red lights. Yeah, those are cool. But they were pretty much just discs as well. Yep, sky discs, easy to draw. <laughs> and yet, this Tic-tacs. is a fucking kick-ass page. Uh, the aliens are pretty interesting. I mean, they're bruisers, big heads, teeth. 
No dicks, no cocks, for once. Yeah? No. I wanted to ask you guys about that. I think kinda, we're done with the, the swing and cock error. Yeah, kind of dialed it back, right? I think there was a time not long ago when these guys would have just had dicks <laughs> swinging around. Rock schlong. So, we kind of get a panel. Everyone gets a panel. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets a panel. You get a panel. <laughs> you get a panel. Sorry. Uh, so we do kind of we do kind of get to see some of the stuff that they do. But you're right. Like uh, Jet kind of just flies through stuff, which is kind of basic, but still pretty cool. <laughs> uh, one thing, kind of interesting to me, in the page where uh, Grizzly's getting wa- rammed. Mm-hmm. The butt uh, panel? The, the butt panel. The butt panel, yes, but not so much the butt. I'm good with the butt. Butt's fine. I'm more <laughs> interested about what Grizzly's getting hit with. Uh, power gloves, yeah, dude. Yeah, those are Clearly. power gloves. See, that's the cool thing about these aliens is they are, like, primitive, like, should have rock dong rock men, and yet they've got space shuttles, they've got guns, and this one appears to have power gloves. And they don't all have power gloves. A lot of them are barehanded. This one specifically seems to have, and they are power gloves because you can tell because they have the purple glow with the with the Kirby dots. Yeah, well, they, they just they don't have the, the knuckles. They got the new gods type uh, flyer, the, the little skis. Do they? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, they do. Huh, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even think about that. Because the, the power gloves were just like uh, something that was laying around that uh, that uh, she dragon found, right? Like I think Johnny Redbeard no, had them. No, that's Johnny Redbeard's little stash with all his gadgets, so like X did they come from, and stuff. Did they did they come from space? They may have, dude. They came we, from Johnny Redbeard. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Johnny Redbeard always seemed like somebody who just could create powers, not just not make like he had X Row Five, the freaking security robot did he build that or did he turn somebody into it i'm pretty sure it was inferred that he built it but i'd Hmm. have to go back so power gloves aren't to you 20 years so to you power gloves aren't unique they are built so anyone can build a power glove but to me they're unique because they were built by johnny redbeard but i don't know i highly doubt these alien ones were were built by johnny redbeard Nope. I gotta these say, I al- feel these are alien power gloves, my friend. Uh, I gotta say, I, I feel like I these know. are alien power gloves. I feel like it's absolutely a way for there to be power gloves in the. I just in find the book it interesting that they have the same auras. Gotcha. I yeah, question it could could be, but uh, personally, I don't think they're related. But what do I know? It's not my comic. And it's just interesting that only like one of these guys might ha- has a pair, or at least we only see one that has a pair. Um, Which means do, they might be rare or, or unique or like only like the, the greatest of the warriors are allowed to use them. Well, it's funny that he doesn't seem stronger maybe than anyone else or bigger. And I mean, yet, I mean, he pops grizzly one. I mean, and I'm pretty sure that's yeah. grizzly going through the buildings going big thom. So, well, for yeah, sure. Why, for sure. why do you say that Raven? Cause there's no other scene where we're seeing a, a guy punch somebody. That's well, what pop, I'm saying you know, is I think guy. it's, they're all using guns pretty much. I think this like this dude like came out. I'm just agreeing, really. I'm saying that like this dude is like, okay, well, here's the strong person of their team, so right. I'm gonna don the power gloves to deal with this person. I think gotcha. if you shoot Grizzly, it's not gonna do shit, really. And so probably like, okay, well, we need to like have a brawler. So here comes this dude, who's like got the gloves to go toe to toe, and he fucking does. Like, goddamn, knocked through a building like crazy. John Day is freaking out. Oh. Well, I'm not in the background. The rock of moon. Um, do you guys think that Grizzly doesn't have a tail? I, no. I mean, do I mean bears have tail, tails, but they have yeah, a little, they they have a little stubby big. tail that would fit in their trunks. Yeah. They got that nub. I'm saying I'm not seeing a nub here, dude. Well. I mean, maybe not. I mean, Mako doesn't have, like, certain... A fin? fin. He doesn't have a fin, right. All right. Maybe he's got a... Maybe he's got a micro fin, okay? Follow-up question. Is it... uh, Is it 
wrong or you know, for to be turned on by Grizzly's ass now that you know that Grizzly is a hot woman. I'm <laughs> got no problem with that. I just uh-huh. don't. I mean, depends what sh- what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking for a big hairy, hairy ass, bare yeah. ass. So, no matter how so. round and bulbous it may be, <laughs> pretty round. That's pretty. It's pretty out there. You know, I'm saying that's a Kardashian size butt. No, it's. I, I'd say it's. Just but it's also hairy. Cut. and It's got a bunch of poop caked onto the fur. Uh, poop. She transforms. Yes. I bet she doesn't poop in this form very often. <laughs> Oh my God! Quite That's follow a lot of up question. Sweaty bear ass. What, do, well, is the follow up question is a grizzly? Does a grizzly shit in the woods? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say if if grizzly has to poop in that form, like is it like you know? Is it like a different experience? I don't know. I'm just weirded out now by the suggestion. Because think of it, that's a whole different type of anatomy. Like, you're a giant fucking person. What if Grizzly ate a shit ton of food and then had to revert? Would she explode? How's it work? It's magic. No, because it just reverts when she Fair. reverts. And so it just forms around it, the new intestine. I, it depends. And it just if, comes out super long. I'm not <laughs> sure if it's a shape shift or if it's a. Uh, two forms thing like mighty man i think it's a werewolf situation you think it's a werewolf situation yeah what like a bear? were bear i don't know these are the questions we ask here on the savage fincast <laughs> <laughs> tough ones i'm sure will be answered soon enough uh i love uh is it blue jay the bird i love yes bluebird all right i love this panel blue jay like, I, like the blue, sports team all right i love this panel of blue jay like flying and getting chased like i just think like the way the wings were done is just so cool like uh just kind of like the spread out like i don't know like the, almost like squares but feathers right. i think it's so cool dude it's a good costume man the dark hawk of savage right is is a bit Dark Hawk, isn't it? That's what I thought. Who is Dark Hawk? Who is Dark Who Hawk? Who is Dark Raven? Hawk? <laughs> Find out next month. Only from Marvel Comics. <laughs> so I have to Google this. Is Wait, Ra- oh, oh, so Raven doesn't actually know who Dark Hawk is because he doesn't like corporate comics. Dark Hawk. You didn't like com- you didn't like corporate comics when you were thirteen yeah, in nineteen ninety. I'm googling it. So Dark so Hawk help. was like so a, helpful. Dark Hawk was like a Marvel, like uh, he was like one of those '90s characters. Like he has look arm- up Dark he, Cock. He's armored Sorry. and he's powered by like a jewel, but he's got like a bird motif with like these kind of like wings under your arm pits. This is not the same. This is not. So the let's same. Don't, don't, don't the shit on my opinion here. I'm okay. too late. I already did. I took a bear transformation style poop on your opinion. Tell Does you it... what, Dark Hawk was um, kind of like my entry drug into collecting comics. That and New Warriors and Sleepwalker all kind of came out around the same time ish. Sure. I wanted sure. to jump in with a new number one. Oh, son of a bitch. Yes. The uh, Marvel Legends Dark Hawk action figure is like out of stock and is like $60 crazy <laughs> you were gonna buy a dark hawk action figure yeah who would mean hold on i don't know people that like quality i'm just kidding <laughs> dark hawk's <laughs> kind of kind of uh yeah um did he turn into like a real cool character eventually i mean he's awesome he's dark hawk <laughs> it doesn't sound very convincing dude he's like uh 90s extreme rom in my eyes yeah, it's not a bad description. You know what, Jim? Stealth. This just tells me that Eric would do a good job drawing stealth. Uh, stealth, yes. Stealth is an image comic. Which is the Robert with. Kirkman Dark yeah. Hawk. Yep. <laughs> Robert, you call him Robert Kirkman Dark Hawk. I hate the name Dark Hawk. It's like, sounds like you're saying Dark Hawk. Good point. Dark Hawk. 
Not dark cock, dark cock. When I rub this jewel, I become dark cock. Dark cock. Are, yep. I'm pretty sure dark hawk predates shadow hawk. Oh, yeah, definitely does. Dark Hawk came out in like 91, I want to say. It was Very before different. the Image Guy split off. I mean, this is one of the first comics I collected, and it was. Yeah. You know, I was collecting before Image. It was always a mystery of what was under that mask. Because it's oh. an alien. Oh, mask. like, gotcha. Like, it wasn't the kid's face. Right. It was like he took on a different form, like an alien thing. Anyway, Dark Hawk. Yes. Dark Hawk. Tangentially, uh, you get a really lovely uh, sequence of fucking North Force just getting clowned. <laughs> well, getting, this is where everyone dies. This yeah, is the big, this is the big punch out. Oh, everyone no. dies ending uh, <laughs> that I was expecting that everyone was going to die. Here we go. Jim, were you really feeling the I was right feelings well up? <laughs> They're losing steam. He was rubbing his hand, palms together. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, but yes. then we get the better choice. This is, dude, the twist that hootin' zoots, baby. Hootin' zoots. <laughs> Love it. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Do you think he's got a really high voice and he comes on the scene and he's just like, hootin' zoots. No, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's more like hootin' zoots. <laughs> hootin yeah, I think he's zoots. heroic. <laughs> hootin' zoots. Why do you think it's high pitched? I don't know because it would sound fucking. It just sounds funny in my head, just real silly. I don't like the way you're saying it. <laughs> Zoots! I don't like that at all. I don't either. I don't either. That's why I think it's so ridiculous. Say it like you would say. Say it like you would say, "Son of a bitch." I just picture him saying it like the guy from Family Guy. I don't. Weird. I knew That's that. A weird take on it. <laughs> Do you mean that old man? Like, yeah, I hate it. I hate it. Ooh. Oh, I hate I'm it. I'm not being serious at all here, guys. Okay, I'm just making myself laugh. But I am letting you know I seriously hate that voice. <laughs> I do too, but that's why it's so funny. <laughs> Actually, here where he's Fucking murdering tits. everybody, he's probably saying more like hooting zoots. <laughs> Christian Bale, Batman. Yeah, you can't say hooting zoots all angry. There's no way. Uh, Hootin zoots. Uh, Hootin zoots. Hootin zoots. I'm, I'm Captain Tootsie. <laughs> <laughs> so Captain Tootsie is here, and he saved the day with his he, sonic cannon. He rocks his, his their Fargo ship. Fargo ray. Let's get it right. It's a Fargo ray. She so, Fargo beams. Was I missing something there? What is that? What Fargo? Yeah, what's, I mean, I know what Fargo is, the place. I'm talking about what is a Fargo Ray? I'm pretty sure it's just a reference to the movie Fargo, and that is it. No, in no world does that make sense. What? It, how? It's just, a, it's <laughs> just, just like, a, no. <laughs> Fargo's just a name. I, I, I don't think it's a reference to anything. Okay, just checking. I, think it's just I just want to make sure I wasn't... I think it's just a Canadian reference. Well, I was just making sure I wasn't missing something. That's of course, all. Fargo's was, not in Canada. Fargo's in, like, Wisconsin, right? I'm sure there's a Fargo. In yeah, Fargo's somewhere. in yeah. America. Yeah. It's one of the Dakotas. Don't you know? I've never seen that movie. Fargo's great. I'm sorry. Sidebar, Jim, just write it down somewhere that you should watch Fargo. Yeah, it is. I think I own it. Oh, it's fucking good. You should watch it, dude. It's good. All right. That's it. Sidebar over. It's a TV show, too. Yeah. Heard Years that was after. good. Heard that was good. Never saw it. But please watch the movie first. It's got this legendary quote. So, obviously, Captain Tootsie is a much better addition to North Force. Because he's a total, like, wet blanket douchebag. <laughs> the rest of these people. <laughs> Didn't you kind of get that that was the, like, punchline of the story? Yeah. Is that he was just a bigger lame than <laughs> Malcolm, so he fit better? Yes. That was my <laughs> takeaway. He's a much more traditional superhero. Who can totally hang with these guys? Bro, yeah, the Tom, he's not a, he's the not Tom a breeder Strong. either with a family. <laughs> you call him a breeder? <laughs> a breeder. <laughs> no time for that shit. No time for love. Oh, Tootsie's you can't go into space because you got to hang out with your family. <laughs> we'll go Bro, with the we'll go with the Zoot and Hoots guy. Tootsie looked at Malcolm and said, "Go home and be a family man." <laughs> 
Yeah, go burp your babies. Let the adults take care of this. I'm gonna go to a fucking planet of stone man and rock their shit back to the stone age. Tootsie out! Me and Captain Zoots over here. <laughs> Captain Zoots. Shout out to the Canadian for saying you saved our Canadian bacon. Fuck yes! That was a, a, a shitty like panel by the Canadian. It's like, man, you're a dick. If we can't count on you, then maybe you're not North Force material. Yeah, kind of a cock. Yeah, yeah. We I just saved your ass from Thor. <laughs> right. The day before. Also, you're, I'm the only one who wasn't about to get freaking iced. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, like, remember when the stone aliens were just shitting all over you guys' breakfast and I was still like standing and fighting? And Hootie Zoot came and saved your ass, but if he wasn't there... I, I gotta say, like, also, North Force is kind of looking like bitches in this panel, too. Because Tootsie's, like, uh, like super casual. He's like, yeah, bros, let's just go to their planet and keep kicking their ass. I'm not done kicking their ass enough. And they're all like, cool, space, wow. <laughs> space is awesome. They just sound like little wimps. And Tootsie is, like, fucking just like, yeah, no problem. I well, kicked their ass back in 51. Oh, yeah. Space, space, that's my old stomping ground. I've been to uh, Planet Cygnus seven, five times. and <laughs> Didn't you get, like, lost in space and stuck there for, like, decades? So did his sidekicks. <laughs> so did my seven, five-year-old friends. <laughs> Weird. Ho- Hoot and Zoots, I'd never do that. You're sick. <laughs> so uh, there, there is that another kind of change with the... the the dialogue boxes on this last panel, which uh, we don't get in the regular issue of Savage Dragon, just and just like that, the job interview was over, and Malcolm Dragon didn't make the team. So yeah. I guess you know you're right. This isn't Malcolm's kind of inner thoughts, because again, third person. So either, either that's someone from uh, North Force, or it's. Like Jim saying, Eric's just kind of like narrator dialogue. I mean, Eric's never really done internal dialogue as captions. It's always been an omnipresent narrator. That's why it feels no, like it's uh, the Canadian. What's uh, uh didn't um Alex do it with that one that Jim? You always get pissed off about. And that was the last time I ever saw him. Yeah. <laughs> Till the next time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then I saw him again, but I didn't say that. I didn't know at the time that I would see him again. So who else thinks that this entire exercise was to get North Force and Tootsie off planet? Not me, dude. I know that you think that, but I think it was just to show that, A, Tootsie's still out there and a badass, and, B, that Malcolm just can't cut the mustard. As a team guy, not a team player. Because um, the feeling I get is that, historically speaking, dragons have a tendency to have to face their problems alone. Either their friends aren't available, or they're off doing something else, or he's by himself. And this basically clears the board of everybody who might be able to help out Malcolm, except for maybe Freak Force, who are still stuck in America most of the time. So it's like Malcolm alone defending Canada. Well, he even told him, he's like, bro, there's an impending gang war coming. And they're like, man, we'll get it. There was a whole sequence of them being like, man, I'm begging for that. When they come out of hiding, then we'll deal with it. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Now that you say it, I think about it. I'm like, (laughs) I think that's exactly what's going to happen is that they're going to be in space and there's going to be a goddamn vicious circle fucking war And it's just going to be, oh, bro, that's the covers. That's why Paul and Malcolm are just beating the shit out of VC goons. Yes. They're all that's that's left. Oh, my God. You used closure to properly figure things out. And the next time we see North Force, I'm sure it'll just be like Captain Tootsie and frickin' Grizzly with one arm limping back to Earth. (laughs) No way. they'll, They'll land conveniently right after the 
Malcolm gets the <laughs> shit beat out of him by the vicious circle. We're back. Did we miss anything? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. I mean, good call, Jim. Fuck. Um, as we reflect on this, uh, just sort of overall, um, I think. Well, no, never mind what I think. What do you guys, like, how are you feeling about this as, uh, try to put yourself in the shoes of, like, well, I want to hear both your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts on this as a Savage Dragon issue, but I also am interested in your thoughts of uh, this as a North Force Zero. Like, how how do you feel, like, in a measure, like, sort of rated on both scales? I think as a North Force Zero, it does a pretty good job. It introduces the entire team, uh, showcases each one couple times uh tells you everything you need to know makes for a decent like if it's like the only book you read it tells you everything you need to know uh, which to be fair isn't a lot i mean i don't even think that the issue mentions that like malcolm is like savage Dra- the son of the original savage dragon i'm pretty sure it just assumes that you don't need to know that yeah, which is nice, actually. I think you really don't need to know that. I think if you told a new reader that, they'd probably be like, huh? uh, what's, what? What's all, what, what is all the background, they say? A couple of years back, Malcolm Dragon had his own reality TV show. Before that, he was all but chased out of the States by an angry anti-alien mob. He's a celebrity and a detention getter and everything that North Force isn't. And that's basically all the background you get on Malcolm. Uh, and the chat he has with Maxine. And he gets to see his kids. Yeah, he's a family man. Yeah, that's, Big that, time. That, that's basically what is emphasized about Malcolm, is that he is he is dedicated to his family. He isn't going to run off with flights of fancy of fighting aliens in space. So, Craig, as yes. a Dragon issue and as a North Force Zero issue, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm... F- if we're going uh, scale of one to ten, I'm feeling five on both. To be, if I have to be honest. Okay, lay it out there. I feel like with the, the if I'm looking at it from somebody that's not a Dragon fan and buying a North Force Zero, it doesn't do enough for me to be like I need more of this book. Okay. I feel like the fight was just a little too by the books. There wasn't any kind of hook. Like, if, if if you're trying to sell this as just a North Force comic, there needs to be something to hook you in. And I don't necessarily think that's what he's going for here, um, because obviously he's not trying to come up with an issue one or two of North Force. Um, but I'm just saying, if, if I'm in this just for North Force, I might be like, yeah, it's good. I don't know if I would buy another. Mm-hmm. Uh, for an issue of Dragon, again, I feel like with all the great issues that have come out lately... Um, we've seen a lot of North Force action lately, and I feel like there's been some better action with North Force and other issues. And so mm-hmm. I'm grateful for some of the more talking heads with, like, the, the you know, the kind of characters when they're not in costume and, and getting to learn a little bit more from them. But, you know, it was okay. It just didn't – wasn't one of my favorite issues this year. It was good sure, enough. Sure. I think it was middle of the road. It wasn't poor. It wasn't excellent. Uh, I'm looking forward to like moving on and, and seeing Paul and, and Malcolm battling Vicious Circle. Sure, sure. It's fair. That's fine. Let's get your thoughts. I mean, um, I'm kind of close to the same boat. Uh, as a... Savage Dragon issue, uh, it doesn't quite land at the same high bar some of the previous issues have been at. Um, I think that Savage Dragon, when it's at its best, has just a bunch of irons in the fire, and it's got, like, you know, gore and sexy sexy stuff and things like that. Um, so, you know, you didn't get much from Malcolm. Uh, like you said, you didn't get a ton. Like these dudes show up, and there's not too much to them. They're all like kind of rock aliens. They all yeah, look the same. It's another you know? case of a large group without a leader or motivation or anything. Sure, sure. Although they do have some motivation, Tootsie gives that. They're coming back for revenge after a long time too, like seventy years. Um, but 
I would have liked a Demon King. I, I would have liked a leader. You're a hundred percent right. I think uh, whenever, like, I think we've seen a lot in the Malcolm era of just uh, just huge groups of the same guy. Right. You know, demonoids, uh, lava lords, like just fucking. You know, uh, it, it's it would be cool if these aliens had like you know different types of aliens. Like, they're all species, but, like, you got, like, you know, different, like, breeds. Or, like, there was just a, a leader, or like, a king and a queen of them or something like that, right? Something to juice them up. They were pretty generic. Um, I think that the layouts and stuff, you saw very, I mean, all kinds of masterful cartooning shit with, like, the talking heads and all that. Tons of great action. But that being said, like, it was largely toothless action. Like, these aliens didn't bleed. They were just, like, stone chunks, you know? So for me, just not that visceral seeing them getting beat up into chunks or whatever. Right. I think the highlight of this for me as a Savage Dragon issue was the twist to Rooney of learning that North Force had that old school alter ego vibe. I love Tootsie coming in and just stealing the fucking show like crazy. Wasn't expecting it. And I like the twist that Malcolm didn't just fucking get on the team. Like, I kind of thought Malcolm was going to just be in the team, like, no problem. Like, he was built up, like, well, dude, I mean, this guy kicked Thor's ass and saved the day. Like, yeah, they're even at the pool game saying, oh, it's just a formality. And it's like, felt like it was Malcolm was going to be just in the team. And him flunking out at the end was awesome. So I think there was stuff to love. I still got to agree with Craig, I think, as a dragon issue. There just were higher issues like previously that you can point to as like more savage dragony. It was a North Force issue. I think it's good. I really do think it's solid. Like I compared this, me and Jim we talked about like we were reading a lot of number ones lately. Mm -hmm. If this was a number one of something, I would read the number one into. I would be like into it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think these characters are interesting. I think North Force is interesting. I think they were made more interesting by their reveal of their alter egos. And I think this is a good setup, a good premise. I would read a North Force 1 and 2. I would read a North Force ongoing. Well, remember, um, this is a zero, which means it's basically like a prologue to the actual right. team book that would exist in the future. When the right. team, and you imagine the, the actual team book is going to be Tootsie and these do, these guys like yep. doing their own thing. And that's where you're going to get the more interpersonal stuff. Right, uh, you didn't get in this issue, which is more of a, like I mean, what's basically happened here, when you think about it, is there are cases in the past of stuff that comes out in one series, leads to a spinoff in another, and then they mm-hmm. repackage that original first appearance as like a zero issue. Right. Perfect example of this is the uh, uh, perfect example of this is Spider Girl, who originally appeared in an issue of What If. And then mm-hmm. Spider Girl got her own series, and they re-released the issue as the Zero issue. Sure, sure, okay. It's it's just weird though to start off with a Zero issue, and that's your first exposure. But I think the first exposure is always what's going to sell you to want to buy more. So you're not going to buy that issue one. But that's even if Zero is, is not supposed to be an issue one, it's supposed to be just a background, right? If but it this, doesn't catch you, you might not pick it up. But like, I think the joke here. Or at least the concept here is, Eric has released a zero issue to a series that doesn't exist. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. But I, I just the think... hypothetical is the question being posed is as a North Force comic, what are your thoughts on it? I think well, this is what I was going to end with is just because I'm done is just say that I think it was a stronger North Force Zero than it was a Savage Dragon to. 56 i think or whatever we're on <laughs> i can agree with that yeah but I, I think it was a really good north force actually I, like i said if this was a number zero that i was buying i would definitely because i've read some weak ass number ones lately and this is stronger than many of the number ones that i've read uh i just don't think as a dragon issue it was as strong so if i'm slapping numbers on it i'm gonna give it a eight as a north force zero uh, I'm gonna give it like a s- seven as a dragon, like ah. six. You know, I like to dragons are usually ten, so that's pretty low for I'm me. I'm gonna reject <laughs> both of you. I okay, think, I think it's a perfect for good. a change. I think it's a perfect yeah for a change. I think it's a perfectly good Sav dragon issue, to be honest. Okay, I I okay. don't I don't need, elaborate. I don't need the blood and guts and sex and what have you. That's all great. 
But sure. I don't think a great Savage Dragon issue needs that. And while okay. this is not a great Savage Dragon issue, I okay. think it introduces a lot of interesting new characters. And I, yes. I personally don't think I was, you know, I personally think we got enough about them to at least, you know, make them interesting. Even mm-hmm. if we don't get, like, super, like, esoteric details about what their actual abilities are. Um, I think as get- a Savage Dragon issue, it's... I'm not going to... Serviceable is probably uh, kind of an insult. I say it's at least an eight. I mean... Can I jump in there and agree with you on just the... Uh, I and forgot he, to say that, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, I think that actually a strong suit, a huge strong suit, is that the Malcolm era has definitely needed more unique characters. Right. And I think that this is some of the strongest characterization you've seen for supporting cast members yes. in a long time. This is, so actually, this is, that's this, a good point. This is like meeting the underground freaks. This is like yeah. meeting Freak Force, or pieces of Freak Force for the first time. Barbaric and Ricochet, for example. Right, um, yeah, agreed. And of course, immediately they get sent into space. <laughs> which I think is, uh, honestly, I think that's the big, uh, mistake, but I'm not Eric, and, I, and my, my opinions are shit. Well, this is just your opinion. It's fine. Everyone's got their opinion. Um, but so as a, as a zero issue, here's the thing. Here's my take. Here's the thing. I think is is hard to understand because it doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. Mm-hmm. I don't think of the zero issue as a first issue, even though it is, you know, technically the first issue, because it's not mm-hmm. the first issue. It's a zero issue. The first issue, issue number one, would have to do all the wows and get me in there and really wow me, Eric. An issue zero doesn't really have to do that. Not in the same way an issue number one has to. I, th- I know this doesn't make any sense. No, I get what you're saying. I'm just not hung up on the semantics that hard. It's If it's my first exposure, I need to be wowed. But I thought it did a good job. So, a better job as a zero. Here's how, here's how I... Here's the mental gymnastics I'm doing. Uh-huh. And this is part of like how I consume media, so this is a highly gym situation. We're here for your opinion, baby. That's I it. project, I create, I imagine there is already a North Force series. Mm-hmm. The details are unknown, but it exists. And so this is the pilot. These, this, is the, this, this is the Savage Dragon issue that led into the ongoing series. That's how I have to think about this. Not as like the first North Force issue. And as... Got it. And as in that context, I think it works pretty well. Um, and I know that's insane, and I know no. <laughs> it, it, it is uh, a bunch of word gibberish to context to 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 force a contextualization that may or may not actually exist. I mean, as far as I know, Eric sees this as issue one, but I think personally that you can't, or you not that you can't. Of course, you can do whatever you want. I can't think of it in those terms because it's an issue zero, not an issue number one. And so the rules are different. I think that um, these uh, backups, uh, these profiles, these bios, they I enjoyed them a lot more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. Um, because these are essentially origin stories. Right, right. And that's kind of why they're fun is that in a lot of ways you're getting bios for characters that we've not met yet. Mm-hmm. So it's like this is like a this is like a possible these how do I phrase this this is like a possible future this is like a a hypothetical series that you're getting details about sure, like, an, yeah. like a fictional comic yeah that I mean I get I'm kind of getting in your mindset of what you're saying because like for it's, instance it's like when, it's like an invincible when Mark talks about science dog right it's like a fictional comic but then eventually you get real science dog stories <laughs> right right. I just feel like it's kind of cool, like to get these origins because uh, your mind. If I mean, if you're like me, you read about these characters and you want to know more. Right. Like it's like well, and like this stuff didn't like. I was kind of like, well, okay, like it's cool that like Raptor's an old woman, but like it never really goes into like why she becomes like a red monster. But then you get the backup, and it totally does. <laughs> like it tells you exactly why she becomes like a red claw monster, and so I was like, oh yeah. So again, these. When I say North Force Zero lands better for me than Savage Dragon 256, it's kind of like, I think these profiles really, like... I know he had to keep them separate in order to have North Force Zero have something. Yeah. 
But I feel like if these were in the back of that Savage Dragon, I would have felt stronger about that Savage Dragon issue. Right. That makes sense. In a weird way, I guess. <laughs> what about you, Craig? How are you feeling about the like the origin approach here in these bios? I I, don't, I like the bios. I mean, I, I think they're... I mean, everyone loves those kind of like comic book bios whether it's the marvel comics handbook or going on the wiki it's it's a fun little thing you know just a lot of information that is just compact and right there um it's cool what do you guys think of the bios versus the backup that so you got the backup in the regular savage dragon format and the bios in the north force i always prefer backups to Oh, me too. Yeah, to, I to prefer text. the backups to the bio. Yeah. <laughs> I guess one thing we should talk about for the listeners is that we're still we're planning on interviewing the creators of that backup, um, which is Dave Kelly and Dean Haspiel. Um, and I think we we're talking about doing because this is a multi-part story. So we weren't going to do it this time just because there's a lot to unpack with North Force, but we will get to that so I don't think we really want to talk about this backup at this point do we? Do we, we want to hold off on it? Because I did have one thing I wanted to say about it Well I guess we can say it, we can still interview them separately. Yeah we'll, we'll do it, it separately but here's the thing, I didn't know, at first I didn't realize it was, this was a Red Hook story uh, I have not read right. the Red Hook but I'm, I am aware of him um, He had a dragon backup previously too Right, but I was yes. aware of him slightly before that too. Oh okay. But yes he he, he had appeared in several backups previously I expected this to kind of be its own thing, um, uh-huh. just you know another Red Hook story. Uh, mm-hmm. But then there's that stinger. Yeah, dude. That this is in fact a, a Savage Dragon crossover yep. tie-in. So that's something. That's good. I actually like my eyes did the little ooga at that point because I too was thinking that it was going to just be a self-contained backup. And then to find that it's going to be like, you know, dragon centric, I was like, oh, dude, fuck yeah. Malcolm related. Yeah. So, did you guys, you guys remember the Aquaria um, backups? Yes. Like yes. The, the mermaid girl. Do you know that this in, that's in the same universe as Red Hook? They're I both didn't. in like. I didn't know post, that, but that makes sense. Yeah, they're both in that post Brooklyn. It's a, it's a Dean Haspiel uh, Brooklyn superhero universe. And so they're in the same kind of city, um, which is kind of neat to think about. But I didn't realize that until I started digging into Red Hook more to prepare. Um, No, that's very cool. I had no idea. You know, I'm a sucker for that, dude. I love those, like, creator. Like, we're just, like, talking about, like, Donny Cates and his, like, uh, you know, crossover universe where he's just got all his, like, you know, properties. Just hell yeah, dude. Have those have that world building, you know, pull it all in. But I I, I do think yes, it, it makes it more enjoyable when that last panel saying that oh it's a Savage Dragon tie-in. This is kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. I enjoyed it. I like the setup. I like the premise. I like the stinger. Like I think Red Hook's a cool visual. Like I'm into it. Like I'm I'm ready for more of this i think it was sometimes i forget which was we had the uh whole like the blimp city back up where you just weren't getting enough right and yeah. i think this is given enough pages to breathe and so i like it i like this a lot i'm i'm into i'm into this you know what i mean right do we know how many parts it's gonna be at all no idea not at this point but i bet we get that in the interview <laughs> We gonna find out. And, uh... Yeah. I think that about wraps things up. I think it's yeah. time for you to do your job, Raven. I will. Do the job. Savage Dragon 260. Torment Triumphant. The Mad Menace Torment has come to Toronto seeking revenge against Malcolm Dragon. And that cover haven't looked it up look it up has a fantastic cover like eric's been on a fucking hot streak of fantastic covers 
But that's the one of Torment pulling Maxine out the window by her hair as, like, Malcolm's coming up from her behind her. Fantastic cover. Love Torment. He's definitely one of the Malcolm era guys. Love to see the Malcolm era, like, just his rogues gallery get screen time love it so fuck yeah very hype for 260 cannot wait show wheat well thank you very much yeah thank you craig thank you jim thank you all our listener friends and of course you can always uh find us on our website savagefincast.com uh, you can find us on YouTube, our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash savagefincast. Send us an email to savagefincast at gmail.com with any questions, comments, answers to our interesting conversations, suggestions, hate mail, you know, what have you. Um, <laughs> find us, of course, online on Facebook. We're always hanging out on the Eric Larson Savage Dragon uh, Facebook group. And uh, that's, yeah, I think that's everywhere. Find us on uh, Spotify, listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and uh, of course, um, uh, Anchor FM. Cool. Thank you very much, fellas. Peace.